Right, folks, this is a new podcast from the two mics, and I'm going to give you old energy boy, MG, to introduce it. Yeah, we've edited out all the nonsense with Mike Porky Perry, so it might be a bit shorter than usual. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Mike Graham, he's Mike Parry. You're listening to Two Mics on Talk Radio. Coming up this morning, we're talking rubbish. Nothing unusual about that, you might say, but this time it's about new recycling rules and the punishments you'll face if you don't comply. Plus, we've got a woman who's gone back on the booze because she thought she was too boring on the wagon. And we're getting a visit from an old Fleet Street colleague, John McIntyre, who's got a book out about the secrets of the stars. We'll try and get him to reveal something uh, which is not, in fact, libelous. 0844. 499 1000 is the number. We'll be doing a bit of listography a little bit later on as well. You're listening to The Two Mics with me, Mike Graham, and Mike Parry on Talk Radio. The 21st Century Dream Team of Dialogue, Debate and Discourse. The Two Mics on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. It is time to say a very good morning to Mr Mike, a porky parry who's looking a little bit sort of uh, wilty, I have to say, in this uh, hot weather. Well, yeah, good morning to you, Mike. You're right, absolutely right, I am. I mean, I certainly wasn't born to live in this sort of temperature. And when I came to see you in Mallorca last week, yeah. I thought, wow, a couple of days of this, you know, that's all right. Well, when but, you're in Mallorca, it's fine. You can jump in a swimming pool every time well, it's too hot. Yeah, but even when I got back to my hotel and, mm. you know, I had to spend uh, like a half a day there. In the bar. Yeah, in the bar, actually, yeah. yeah. But there was nowhere that was cool um, because they like opening all the sliding door windows yeah. so all the heat comes in. Right. And I said, can't you shut all those? And then the air conditioner can be switched on. I yeah. get cool. Yeah. And they said, yeah, but there's another 30 people in the bar who yeah. want to be warm. Well, that's the trouble, you see. Yeah. You can't go through life just yeah. being only interested yeah. in your own well-being. Well, well, you could have stayed in the room and just, uh, you know, potted about in the air conditioning yeah, in the yeah, room. that's right. Watch Sky News, watch Sky which News. I could have done at home, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's um, things you have to do. Now, I can honestly say yeah. that this morning you will be talking with some authority on a subject you know an awful lot about. Yeah, that's right. Rubbish. Rubbish. You're absolutely <laughs> right. But actually, actually, you're right, because I've had a battle with uh, the council at one of my premises in... Uh, one of your premises? Yes, in Surrey. How in many Surrey. premises do you have? Well, I'm not going to go into that, because it's unimportant. No, I think but people no, would like to know. No, no, no. A ballpark it's, figure would be helpful. It, it's irrelevant, honestly. Is it less I, than 10? Listen, I can't get into that. I can't More than 10? I can't get into that. More what I'm saying 20? to you is this, that these days, all the recycling and all that, Is this right? the place where the Egyptian doctor lives? Uh, no, it's not, actually. Where it's one a, of my father's paintings hangs. Uh, no, no. Yeah, you might have thrown it out by now. That might be well, part of the rubbish. Have. Well, you know, well, it's my property, not yours. So, you know. Well, why don't you just tell us how much but, money you make on it every year? Well, there's no need for all this. Now, what I'm saying is, well, this show I'm, is about transparency. I, I'm fighting a battle here for you know the common man, the oh, yeah. the, the decent common man, the common man and, who owns about 25 properties. Now, now, let, now, let's stop all this, right? Now, what happens is yeah. that we have a what's called a bin store, and there's three big metal bins in there. And they have a black lift-up lid. Oh, I've got one. We've got one of those. Yeah. We've got, in fact, we've got two. We've got one for recycling yes. and one for rubbish. Right. Well, this is, this is it, you see. So, you know, in the normal uh, course of events, people just go in, they throw the rubbish there, no problem at all. Yeah. Then, of course, the thought police arrive, yeah. the rubbish police arrive, yeah. and they position a load of... These will be people employed by the council. Oh, yes, it? absolutely. A load yeah. of orange bins outside, OK? Yeah. Then they put a notice up on the front of the bin store um, uh, area yeah. and say, you know, don't throw th- the, all these things into the bins inside yeah. here, throw them into the new recycling bins. Yeah. Problem is, the new recycling bins, A, are much smaller, yeah. and B, only get collected every two weeks. Yes. The bins in the bin store get collected every well, week. Well, the problem with some of the recycling uh, plans in this country yes. is that it becomes so complex Co- that so nobody complex, knows which ridiculous. days things are, are being right. picked up. And you know how with, uh, with mm. bank holidays and Christmas yeah. and all of that, people get confused about the regular bins? Yes. You can't ever work out when they're coming back for the no, recycling. No, uh, absolutely. So anyway, so what happens then is, of course, people then are confused. They just go straight to the recycling bin, put everything in there. Yeah. Now, the, the consequence of that is the recycling bins aren't big enough. Mm. Uh, there's not enough of them. Yeah. After about and a few days... how many days, different categories have you got? Three. One for, what, cardboard? Yeah, one for glass and one bottles glass, and all that kind of stuff. One for the cans or oh, plastic. I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Well, you should know because it's yeah. important. Well, whatever. Because uh, there is an important issue that if they mm. have set them up this way, yes. it's because they don't want things contaminated, which yeah. is fair enough, yeah, yeah. except for the fact that we heard earlier this week, did we not, yes. that one particular council was actually just putting it all in some big landfill, landfill. anyway. Landfill, uh, 384 million yeah. tonnes go into landfill yeah. every year. When you know, I lived so, in Linlithgow, which yes. is a beautiful town just on the outskirts of Edinburgh, Linlithgow. Yeah, where we will be going yes. tomorrow, exactly, straight after yeah. this show, to do a rip-roaring weekend at the Edinburgh mm. Festival, right? Uh, which is now going to be filmed for a Christmas video. We it hope, is, yes, yes. Uh, if all goes well. And in um, fact, a fly on the wall documentary. Very possibly so. Mm. Now, mm. Uh, in Linlithgow, uh, in the car park yes. opposite uh, my house, which was a, like a, a, a Tesco car park, right. they had a bottle bank, right? Yes. And they had the usual brown bottles, yeah, yeah. clear bottles, yeah. and green bottles. Right. Three different holes, right? right. Which right. I assiduously used to put them in. Yeah. I happened to be I there. you filled up the bottle bank in one weekend, didn't Well, you? no, it was very large. 
No, it took me more well, than one weekend so what? to fill it up. So is your consumption of wine over well, a weekend, I mean, my consumption of wine is, is as of mm. nothing compared yeah. to yours. Anyway, so go stop on, yeah. projecting. Yeah. Anyway, so I happened to be there when the big lorry turned up. Mm. It was all these massive sort of yes. skip yes. type things, right? Yes. Like a, so yeah. they had to haul it up. Right. And the noise of emptying the bottles is well, horrendous. Not only was the noise mm. horrendous, mm. but I, I soon worked out that what this guy did was he just emptied the whole thing yeah. into one big container. Oh, I totally agree. So the idea that you were doing brown, yeah. clear and green... It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, but it seems more ridiculous than that, let me tell you now. So what happens is they put it on the recycling bins, OK? Yeah. The consequence is, as soon as the recycling bins get full, mm. people don't go and think, I'll put it somewhere else. They just keep chucking it in. Yeah. So it spills out all over the floor. Yeah. It then becomes like a bomb site. Yeah. Other people then passing think, oh, this is a rubbish tip, and they Start throwing. I mean, it's disgraceful. I don't know. Meanwhile, I go into the bin store and I see that only one and a half of the big metal bins is full of anything. Yeah. The other one is not. Now, do you know why? Why? Because some of the refuse collectors, to save themselves having to empty three bins the following week, have turned the bin away from the opening yeah. and against the wall. But what they also so unless do, you're a contortionist, you yeah. can't actually open the lid. Yeah, I'm not a contortionist. No, exactly. You? Not me, no. not me. Yeah. No, I mean, the thing is that, you know, um, in, the problem here is mm. that people also then just decide to put it in regular black plastic bags. Exactly. And just chuck it either it, in the, on totally the town great. dump or put it in the rubbish. No, so, no, no. so it can fix the object. No, they bring down the black plastic bags and, oh, look, the recycling bins are full. Boom, chuck it on the floor, yeah. you know, and it gets completely out of control. Mm. In fact, we've been fly-tipped at one of my properties yeah. where a bloke who'd taken his car apart yeah. brought all the spare parts, mm. like the alternator, yeah. uh, the the uh, the wheels, yeah. the wheel discs, yeah. bits of the engine, mm. and just dumped them outside our uh, recycling bins. Shocking. And you can't recycle them. No, you can't. So, You're so supposed to take those to the city dump. Well, yeah, but people never bother. Now, the I re- go to the dump quite often, actually. Yeah, well, you know, I don't have time. Well, now, you've got more time than I've got. You've got nobody yeah, else to look after. Yeah, I've got loads you've got of nothing things. to do. I have everything no, to look after. nothing to do. Everything to look after. Absolute rubbish. Now, then, let me tell you this. The reason we're talking about this is because this morning we read that a council has been blasted for spending £100,000... council? Well, I'm going to tell you in a minute. £100,000 on the bin police. Yeah. And what their job is is to snoop on residents' rubbish. So these okay? will be employees of the council. These are waste minimisation staff who <laughs> check through the right trash, goes in the right waste wheelie bins. Waste minimisation Yeah, waste staff. minimisation. Maybe they should have a bit of waste minimisation at the council. Yeah, ex- ex- right? ex- exactly. I totally agree. Uh, the clipboard-carrying officials dish out yellow warning notices and refuse to make collections mm. if you violated yeah. where you put your rubbish, you OK? See, I think one thing that will happen with all of this is that yeah. somebody yeah. who's a bit cleverer uh, than these council people will actually yeah. launch a lawsuit. Because if the council mm. refuse mm. to pick up your rubbish, That's right. I bet you any money that that is in some way a breach of the law. My council tax on that property is over, or it would be if I lived there, um, £1,600. Yeah, 1600 so somebody pounds. lives there and somebody has yeah. to have their rubbish collected. And yeah. if they refuse, if they take your money and don't collect your rubbish, yes. I bet you any money that that's illegal. How about yeah. this from real Paddy Stavros? Yes. My family live in Swindon. Ask Swindon people about the comedians at Swindon Council mm. and their recycling. There was one here, I think it was Essex, yes. where they actually, in addition to the paper and the plastic and the cardboard and the glass yeah. and everything else, and there's also a garden waste as well, right, yeah. uh, they introduced food waste. Yes, oh yeah. So that you actually had to have a little red uh, box right. which you put waste that's food right. in. So yeah. when the family finished the dinner, you scraped all the uh, food into this box, yeah. right? And they wanted people to put it outside. Now, oh, no. how stupid yeah, exactly. w- would you have to be to think that if, fox. that if you put food outside mm, mm, and let it sit there for mm. a week or two, you get rats, you yeah. get foxes, yeah. and no, they, no, so no. then they went, oh yeah, I'll tell you what, don't put it outside, mm. keep it in the kitchen. Yeah, that's oh, right. fine. Yeah, that's so right. in this heat, you're going to keep rotting so, food yeah, like, under the imagine, sink. Imagine rotting cabbage. Yeah. Uh, well, so, so, I mean, you know, your house would be overrun with pests. Oh, definitely. Flies. Now, this is Stoke-on-Trent, this council, who introduced oh, yeah. this new one. And mm. there are reports already coming back saying that one of the things that the waste minimisation waste um, guys are doing is making sure that when a pizza box has been thrown into the right bin, OK? Yeah. First of all, Which they would check... be the cardboard one. The cardboard. They check the right box. Then mm. do you know what they do? Yeah. And they open the box. Yeah. And if they find a few crusts of pizza yeah. in, still in the box... Uh-huh. You get you get the warning, you get the yellow these, warning. I mean, where do these people find the time to I've do no this? I've no idea, I've no idea. And you're right about but putting all the, not just the bottles in the same. I, I witnessed it one morning. They came along, they got the bottle bank, right? And you're absolutely right. There's three holes at the top, but they all go into the same bin. They tip all the bottles into the back of the garbage truck. But then guess what? 
Right. They go and then get the rubbish from the bin store, the yeah. ju- common and garden. Uh, sorry, common just the, or garden? No, the, not the garden. No, not the garden. Just the common. Just the common and general rubbish. Yeah. They tip that in over the bottles. Yeah. It's all ridiculous. Well, there was a story earlier this week, as I said uh, earlier, about yeah. the fact that they just, um, uh, you know, they chuck it on a landfill. Yes. You know, because they can and, and the cardboard, yeah. which they used to sell to China, yeah. because it was very well worth selling. Yes. Uh, apparently, cardboard prices slumped, so they now don't sell it to China anymore. Yes. But they used to put it on a ship and take all the cardboard back to China. Unbelievable. Which is not exactly uh, good for the environment. No, either. it's not. And you're absolutely right, by the way. Say the time, by the way. You don't worry about the time. This is a very important issue. Mm. Um, the £100,000 a year policy at Stoke has already been subject to legal challenge. Yeah. You are absolutely right. Yeah. Campaigners have said the scheme is at best morally wrong, but at worst, legally questionable. You see? That you can be, you know, in any way singled out for not putting a piece of rubbish in the right place yeah. because you can challenge whether who makes the rules on where rubbish should go. Yeah, exactly. And also, not only yeah. that, but certainly if they were to if they were penalise you by not allowing somebody to collect your rubbish yeah. or by banning you from being on the rubbish uh, collection run, yeah. I'm sure that that would be in breach of something. But uh, if anybody's had some problems with their council and how your recycling rules have changed, uh, we'd love to hear from you. The number, of course, here at Talk Radio is 0844 499 1000. You can text the word TALK and your message to 87. 87- 222. Tweet us as well at the two mics. Uh, we'll be doing listography a little bit later on. You can send us a few ideas for that as well. This is Talk Radio. Talk Sport on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. Freedom for sport. Can we kick it? Yes, we can. Talk Sport. Across the UK, online and on DAB. The two mics on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. Crazy. But that's how it goes. Millions of people living as hoes. Yeah, but maybe but it's not too late. This is Talk Radio. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out. And can I just apologise in advance? Because we are in big problems. Gremlins with our podcast at the moment. Yeah. We promise to fix them. Uh, they will not continue uh, for too much longer. But we do appreciate everybody's patience. We, we certainly um, do. Because it is a very, very annoying thing when you play the podcast and, and it suddenly um, stops or does something weird. Yeah, we didn't realise until the thing started going wrong because we have a you know a very smooth delivery of the podcast, generally speaking. Generally, yeah. How many of you rely on the podcast? Yeah. So it's an extra apology, and I'm sorry about mm. that. Uh, listen, I mean, one ha- of the funny things is that... Yes. Um, what's, what, what's the matter with you? What's happened to your arm? Uh, it's, it started bleeding. Why? Uh, well, I'll tell you what it is. Um, mm. When I was on in uh, uh, in Mallorca on holiday, my yes. son's birthday, yes. his birthday, one of his birthday presents, mm. wishes, was to go to a water park. Oh, yeah. Right. So we went to this water park, which was in uh, sort of Palmer. Palmer, you know, yeah, yeah, I know uh, Palmer. Which, I stayed which, there. Uh, I know you did. Yeah, it wasn't very far. From, in fact, it was up exactly. the road from there. Exactly. And yeah. um, in mm. fact, it was the day after we saw you That's right. that we went there. Yeah. And like all water parks, it is basically a kind of germ factory. And you have to be very careful. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because normally, whenever I take any of my kids to a water park, Ooh. one of them gets ill. You know, oh, because God. you don't, you definitely mm. don't ever want to swallow the water. No. You know, there's just people there who you wouldn't really want to associate with, and mm. certainly not want to share. Mm. You know, uh, general sort of stagnant water with. No. But the, and, and the queues and the lines mm. for the stuff is re- are really bad. Yeah. But the kids love it, so yeah. you do it. Yeah. Um, and I was going down one of the slides with them, and I got, a, I, I sort of didn't notice it till the next day, but mm. I got a burn. You know, because they go quite fast. Oh, like a, like a, um, like a friction, friction burn, burn. Yeah, yeah. I see. on yeah, one yeah. Of the, on one of the slides, mm. and mm. I didn't notice it. And then this morning, I was absentmindedly just scratching yes. my elbow. Yeah, because I had course, an itch. Because uh, I had an itch, and because it had, had got a scab on it, mm. I scratched the scab, and it suddenly oh. started bleeding. Oh. So it's, it's more or less stopped now. But I, my apologies if it's Did putting it you off. Did it bleed for a long time? Uh, not really, no. It just bled quite a lot, though, yeah. uh, for, well, um, see, a, for a short period of time. Oh, you see, that is uh, that is a very, very dangerous signal. Do you what know what you that mean? means? What do you mean, a dangerous that, signal? That, that means your liver is completely knackered. My liver is fine. No, I Don't think you're fine. absolute rubbish. No, no, no. What happens is, what happens is, mate, when... No, when, when you cut yourself, you yeah. bleed, OK? That's well, one of the bit, things that happens. a little bit. I mean... Well, I did bleed a little bit. What do you think you, I was, like, uh, hemorrhaging? Well, you, you look to me like you might have been, because, you no. see, what happens oh, is... Oh, yeah, like you're a medical expert. You're the guy who has been, what, 36 hours from death. Yes, that's right. You're the guy who's constantly monitored by Dr. Banner. That's right. Because only one third or 49% of your heart works. Yes, that's right. right? You're the guy who has been warned uh, that if you don't change your lifestyle, you will probably die. Well, we all die eventually, so... so Yeah, I have not been warned to change my lifestyle. I I have not been 36 hours from death. I am not under the constant supervision of a doctor. No. I'm fine. Thank you. Well, let me just tell you this. When, uh, sadly, George Best died... Oh, and by the way, you know Manchester United have been drawn against Northampton in the next round of the EFL. 
which I think must Why are they mean... calling it? Why can't well, they just call it the League Cup? Well, it must be the English Football League. Oh, right. You okay. see what I mean? I, I assume, because they must yeah. have lost their sponsor or something. Well, every year it changes. It was well, the Milk yeah. Cup. Oh, yeah. They've had... It was the Little Woods Cup. Oh, absolutely. It was the uh, it's League Barclays, Cup. Barclays. Carling Cup. Barclays. Bar- no, it was never the Barclays, it was. was it? Oh, yeah, very early on. I'm, I think it was, yeah. 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 Oh, i tell you it was. Today. Remember the newspaper today? Oh, I used to they, be their correspondent in New York. I don't even yeah, remember it. Yeah, yeah, they spo- I was there they, at the launch. They sponsored uh, They sponsored it one year, I think. Did they? Yeah. I but, don't remember uh, that. Anyway, anyway, getting back to it, getting back to it. What I was going to say is... I'm surprised the New Day didn't sponsor it. Uh, the reason they I'm, could have started sponsoring, then they would have stopped <laughs> yeah, sponsoring right, before yeah. it got underway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the season started after they'd gone bust. Uh, what I was going to say was, George Best was banned for a month mm. for kicking the ball out of the referee's hands in what was a jovial and light-hearted fashion. What, in Northampton? No, no, no. Well, why he's playing for Manchester United in a league game? Well, what's Northampton got to do with it? Because they've drawn Northampton. Well, so yeah, but I thought you were going to give me some anecdote about Northampton and Manchester United. I am, because jo- what? because after George Best had been uh, banned for a month, he right. came back to a cup tie, fourth round cup tie well, against Northampton. Against Northampton. Oh, well done. And he scored six goals. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe Zlatan will score. Yeah, six maybe goals. Zlatan will. But anyway, the thing, the reason I raised George Best is mm. in his dying, literally his dying days. Yeah. Poor old George in a terrible mess. I'm afraid, terrible state. He had a liver transplant, and mm. then he started drinking again. So all hope was gone. Yeah. Even the even the expert, the, the specialist uh, liver doctor, came yeah. to the cameras outside the hospital. and said, I'm sorry, all hope has now gone. Yeah. And the reason was they couldn't stop the bleeding. Yes. And the reason they couldn't stop the bleeding is his liver was well, that's so internal badly... bleeding, though, isn't it? No, it's bleeding if you cut him seriously. No, it was internal. It bleeding. was internal bleeding, yeah. but but the reason don't talk rubbish. Re- no, it's no. internal bleeding that kills you, not external Excuse bleeding. Me. Unless you're a haemophiliac. Yeah, well, he'd become a haemophiliac. That's right. the very point. Mm. So don't call me stupid before I finish you uh, telling you the story <laughs> and got the facts. <laughs> what had happened was at home a week earlier he had cut his leg. That's isn't it? Why well, should call you stupid more often? He, he had cut his leg a week earlier at home, yeah. and it would not stop bleeding, mm. and it did not stop bleeding right. until the day he died. Uh-huh. The reason being, his blood had run so thin, literally, yeah. it had no clogging ability, no yeah. clotting, clotting. Clotting. Not clogging. Clogging is something else. Clogging is football. Yeah. He had no clotting ability, yeah. and therefore, he, uh, he was brown bread. Uh, from that moment. Brown bread. Yeah, that's right. It's not a very yeah. respectful term. Well, that's, uh, that's the way people, you know, understand what I'm talking about. So, what I'm saying is, mm. if you're having trouble stopping cuts on your body well, bleeding, I suggest trouble. you've got liver trouble. Well, you I'd may, get it checked you, out you very can, quickly. You can suggest anything you like. I'd get it checked out. There's only one of us that needs to go to the doctors on a regular basis yeah. sitting in the studio. Yeah. It's not me. Okay? Well, listen, I'll tell you something else about the human oh, excuse body. Excuse me, I've just had an urgent text. Oh, right. What's uh, it say? Mr. Graham, you've just hours to claim a free bottle of luxury Caballier uh, with our bank holiday mixes. This is from my wine merchant. Mm. Oh, I've only got okay. uh, a few hours. Of course, to do it's it. a bank holiday this weekend. It is, but it'll pass us by because mm. we will be in Edinburgh. Well, because we won't be uh, not working at any point because we're, no, we're exactly. doing this show on Monday from Edinburgh. We, we are uh, on the bank holiday. Yes, on Monday. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Monday bank holiday. Like sort of an echo that gets everything wrong. No, yeah, I just clarify things. Now, look, I want to tell you something about something else about the human body. Yeah, right, go on. this is a new phenomenon I found out from mm. one of my medical journals. Oh, yeah. And do you know that the security forces now around the world, particularly in America, Mm. are terribly worried about what they've discovered is a new phenomenon called brain jacking. Brain jacking? You can nick people's thoughts. Really? Yeah, it's come about. What a frightening idea, that is. How do you do that, then? Well, um, you know, clever scientists for, like, uh, evil regimes can now hack into people's brains and take their thoughts. (laughs) Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, how? Hey? How? What do you mean, hey? How? Well... Because oh. what they do is, um, uh, let me see. What do they do? Well, brain... No, no, do you? Hang on, brain jacking... <laughs> well, they won't be bothering wait brain jacking wait, you, wait, will wait. they? <laughs> that's a bit odd, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry to report there's so, nothing in here, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. So brain jacking is a real risk for the growing mm. number of patients who have brain implants as the devices... What? Are, are, yeah. What's a brain implant? Well, I'm about to explain this to you. ...are vulnerable to security breaches that could be used to inflict pain and even alter <laughs> behaviour. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, that would that would happen if you got a brain implant. Uh, but presumably, you know you had a brain implant. Well, you're getting this voluntarily. Well, hang on, hang on. Listen, listen. Go on. Deep brain stimulation systems, uh-huh. otherwise known in the business as DBS. You know, right. The DBS. The I thought that system. might be considered a bottle of wine or something. No. Uh, wirelessly stimulate different regions in the brain mm. to help alleviate distressing symptoms. Right. Such battery-powered implants provide relief from Parkinson's disease, chronic pain, tremors. Oh, what you mean? And... So this is something that's medically yeah, um, yeah. given to. Pride, yeah, Tourette syndrome. However, scientists warn that the ability to control the brain remotely uh-huh. creates a backdoor entry for yeah. hackers where patients could be forced to carry out impulsive acts uh-huh. or endure excruciating pain by malicious brain stimulation. Yeah. Right. A highly sophisticated attacker mm. may also 
be able to induce behaviour changes such as hypersexuality or pathological gambling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, well, I mean, I suppose that's fairly obvious, but yeah, I mean, I don't know whoever's yeah. written that story mm. has not written it very well. In your journals, because basically what they haven't said Mm. is how widespread the use of these brain implants is. And I mean, I I don't know anyone who's got brain implants. Well, here, here, I'm going to explain to you. Brain implants are becoming more common. As they get approved for treating more diseases, they become cheaper and get more features. Well, can you get them on the NHS? Well, I think you soon will be able to. Features increasing number of patients will be implanted with them. Uh And uh, Laura Pycroft, who is a functional neurosurgery researcher at Oxford University. Functional? Yeah, functional. What does that mean? Well, I suppose it's opted to non-functional, isn't it? Um, well, you wouldn't want to be a non-functional anything, would you? Anyway, no. I've only ever heard that yeah. uh, used in the context of functioning alcoholic. Uh, well, anyway, she says, this is a good thing overall, but just as more complex and interconnected internet resulted in greater cyber security risks, more advanced and widespread brain implants will pose tempting targets to criminals. Yeah. So you see what these so people are doing So this is another is, story that yeah. is a load of old bolotios, no, no, basically, no, no, isn't no, it? No. Because it's not happening. Uh, it it may happen in the it future is. if something else yeah. happens. Yeah. And in fact, you might as well not bother, uh, but not bother bringing it no, up. No, no. Can't you understand now? People are now having implants put into the inside of their skull well, no, to help not. their brain no. function and no. to beat things like no. Parkinson's disease. No, no. no they're not. Evil it's something, scientists. No, it is something that might be being done in no, the no. future. No, no, it's being At done At the already. moment, there may be a few, but this character yeah. who's yeah. Uh, doing this report yeah. Yeah. has not revealed how many of those well, are actually there's a few already. And now, also, there are no evil scientists. Evil scientists no, can then those beam are just in. in your comic books. No, 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 no. The evil scientists can beam in on the implant. What and evil then, scientists? And then, for instance, they could turn you into a killer, right? So, well, like so, Doctor... No, what, have you been watching The Manchurian no, Candidate? No, 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 no. But, I mean, you remember early episodes of The Avengers with... Uh, <laughs> no, no, don't you? With yeah, Patrick McVie and Emma, wasn't and, real. Em, and Emma Peel. No, no it I wasn't know, real. But they were looking into the future. I like Diana Rigg as Emma Peel. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, th- and they can... I like the Lotus They, they can actually contra- control people's brains and yeah. turn them into killers. I mean, for some unknown reason, it says here you could turn somebody into a manic gambler. But why would you do that? Why would you do that? Well, because you might take their winnings. <laughs> take their winnings. That's a, <laughs> what about if they lose? Well, that's lose, their problem. They lose uh, millions. Well, you st- make sure you're yeah. there when they're winning. Yeah. And then yeah. when they're losing, you're not there. I mean, this follows on from the, the story, time, the hang on, that I, I revealed some months ago mm-hmm. that soldiers and battlefields could soon have the brains of... <laughs> Um, st- yeah. what is it, sparrows? No, pigeons. Pigeons, right, planted into their brains because pigeons so they have... they find their way home. Yeah, they have an automatic guidance system. Mm. That's why homing pigeons fly like they do. Yeah. You put those in the brains of... We haven't got of, time to revisit airline, that. If you put those into the, into the brains of a fighter pilot, yeah. he'll always know which direction he's flying. Yeah. Well, or you could just look at his instruments. Yeah, but he, is it, yeah, but he might have been blinded by a bullet from the, the evil enemy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. Okay. You know? Well, controlled by the evil scientists. Exactly. Dear God. I don't know. I think it's time for him to lie down. This is Talk Radio. We are the two mics. I've got a very nice tweet here from Neil. He says, please can you lovely chaps wish my pal Michael good luck on getting married Sunday to Laura. It will make his day. Thank you. Laura. Laura. And what's the chap's name? Michael. Uh, Michael's getting married to well, Laura. Michael, if you're listening, mate, uh, the very, very best of luck. Why don't we play Tell Laura I Love Her? I was going to say, Tell Laura well, I love not, her. Well, if I not, why don't you just sing it? Yeah, that'll do. Yeah. yeah that'll it, do. That was a, like a country and western song, wasn't it? Um, it was a song no, by I, Hank Williams no, or somebody, wasn't no, it? No, I think it was one of those Everly Brothers type things, wasn't no, it? No, I think it was Hank Williams or some guy who, who wore a cowboy hat, anyway. Mm. Maybe hey. it was that guy who uh, was very tall and died. Tom Hiddleston played him recently in a film. <laughs> you know what I mean? A hey. guy who was very tall yeah. and died. Yeah. Tom Hiddleston played him recently yeah. in a film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a flop film. Tom Hiddleston played him. He was a cowboy. He's yeah. about six foot six or something. Right. And he he had about you know like a million seller hit three times, and then he died. Yeah. Because you know I don't know he didn't behave. So was he uh, was he a country and western singer? Country and western singer in, in America. I mean mm-hmm. one of the most famous ever. Really? Yeah. But you can't remember his no, name. No, I can't remember his name because oh, well. why, why should I? But can I just say on Sunday mm. it's bank holiday Sunday where they get married. Well, you it's know, not bank holidays. No, it doesn't say. Okay. Well, I've just read the tweet out. Yeah. Well, good. Luck. Right. That's all I, all I can yeah. say. We good wish luck. you the very best. Yeah. Yes. You yes. couldn't have said it with any less grace, could you? <laughs> no, well, good luck, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Have well, a good one. You know Speaking I mean, of yeah. cowboys, did you see Nigel Farage on the Donald oh, Trump oh, uh, bandwagon me. yesterday? I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I he, mean, uh, the thing that struck me about mm, his little mm, speech was, yeah. one, his speech was just not very good. 
because it was rambling. It was not. I mean, what the Trump people like is, you know, mm. bang. Yeah. You know, you say one thing, bang. Yeah. You know, and he was. Hey, we'll get rid of crime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That kind of thing. Instead of which, and then you just stand back with your arms folded, yeah. Mussolini style. Yeah. Instead of which, Nigel Farage said, "Can I show you something?" I don't think most of them have worked and understood what he was saying. Well, most of them had never heard of him. Most B didn't know what he was doing there, and C they couldn't understand what on earth he was going on about when he said, "Can I show you something?" I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if she if, if, if I, somebody paid Hillary me. Paid me. Oh, no. And nobody laughed. No, but then he, then they managed to get it when he said it again. He said, "I wouldn't yeah. vote for Hillary Clinton yeah. if she paid me." Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah. it was a very bizarre thing, wasn't yeah, it? It was very odd. Um, just very strange because Nigel Farage, of course, has mm. now become a bit of a redundant character, isn't he? He's no longer head of UKIP. No, I, don't I, don't any, what, I don't know what I don't know what his point was. Yeah. He was trying to make over. He said he wanted yeah. to get out of the public uh, limelight. Yes, and he goes to America to a Trump convention. <laughs> I know. Yeah, well, it's a funny way to get out of the limelight. Yeah, it's a funny way. Get out the line. I totally agree. Mm. But uh, well, that's what pol- politicians are all about. Mm. Always looking for a stage on which yeah. to perform. Okay, yeah. a bit like yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, no, not really. I mean, I. Uh, You're on the I, stage Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We certainly will. Yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in Edinburgh. And by the way, can we just say to you, all you uh, great people out there, we're looking for a, uh, a topic for listography. Today. Yes, we are. Yes, we are indeed. In fact, I've tweeted that out as well. Excellent. Uh, well so, done. Um, so I sh- I'm sure we'll be getting some. Oh, in. Well, you have some uses then. Uh, I have yeah. many uses. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If it wasn't for me. Now, uh, this you... would be a complete shambles. This show. Have you heard about? No, no, it wouldn't. Yeah. No, no, yeah, no. Because the thing about you is, right, you're yeah. like the guy that you throw yeah. everything at the wall, mm. right, and mm. somebody has to make some, some sense of it. Yeah. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have a show. But yeah. if it wasn't for me, yeah. we would have a shambles. Yeah, but you're a thickhead who can't, uh, you can't put uh, a series of facts together in a rapid response. Right. Okay. Uh, What's the like definition you? of a fact? Now, have you heard about this new planet that's like Earth? Uh, yes, I have. Have you? Can you tell me about it, though? Yeah, I'll tell you about it. we've got an expert coming up to talk about it. Excellent. Andy um, Lound. Uh, all the time we've been talking, haven't we, that you know there must be a planet somewhere in the solar system. Or... In fact, he's been hanging on for like seven minutes. Well, in that case, why, why don't we ask him to come on and then he can explain it a bit well, better is, than, he's, than he's, I am. He's already here. Uh, and it's the planet Proxima B, by the way. Is it? OK. Yeah. Yeah. Andy, a very good morning to you. Good morning. I'm terribly good morning, sorry. Andy. I'm terribly sorry to keep you waiting. My colleague here has a hand- tendency to sort of dominate the airwaves. He doesn't like to uh, doesn't like to give up Not any at airtime at all. Not at um, all. What, tell us a bit about this new planet and, and was it? Uh, have, have you been looking for it for a long time? Blimey. Oh, There's about a few aliens up there, I think. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Are you all right, Andy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think Andy's I think been, been kidnapped by aliens. He's been kidnapped by aliens. Yeah, that's it's right, a shocking yeah. state of affairs. So then he started to talk about the new planet. <laughs> suddenly, oh, get him, get him. We're not talking about yeah. the new planet. Well, we're getting back in a minute. Anyway, you tell us a bit about right, it. Right, okay. Meantime. The planet's called Proxima B. The surface is thought to be rocky, possibly with a liquid water essential to life. Yeah. Conditions may be affected by UV and X ray flares from its star. Yeah. How far it away is, is it? Well, it's 30% larger than the that's Earth. That's not what I asked you. 30% larger than the Earth. Yeah. And it's only. <laughs> Four point two light years away. Is that all? Yeah. Oh well, no so, problem at all. Let's see if we can get Andy. Yeah. I think we've managed to get him back from the alien craft. Yeah. Andy, <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. You know, suddenly, as soon as we mentioned the planet, you seemed, sounded like you were talking through Darth Vader's vocal cords. That's right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, this is the way it goes, isn't it? They don't want us to know. No, 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 right. Mr. no Mr. Perry's been able to give me a lot of information, but not uh, exactly where this planet is. So, can you tell us, please? Yeah, I mean, what, what we're doing is there's an international program to find planets going around other stars, and they've actually found a planet going around what's called Proxima Centauri. Right. Now, Proxima Centauri is part of a system called Alpha Centauri system. Oh, I know that one, yeah. Yeah, so Proxima is actually slightly closer to us, just over four light years away. Yes. Mm. Which, relatively speaking, in, in cosmo, co- cosmic terms, is actually quite close to us. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's the closest solar system to us. Right. Um, and what's interesting, this planet is orbiting Proxima Centauri. It's a rocky planet because of the size of it. We can, we can estimate that it's actually quite a rocky planet. In a zone where the heat from the parent star, Proxima, Cent- uh, Proxima Centauri, uh, allows liquid water to exist on the surface of the planet. Mm. Mm-hmm. And this is what's known by many people as the Goldilocks zone because it's not right. too hot and it's not too cold. Right. Right. So, so, well, so, so the conditions are right, but they're just not sure if the, if the, if the liquid water's there. Well, no, I mean, the condition should be right. So if it does contain water, there would be liquid water on the surface. But mm. there are a whole other lot of issues to, to go along with it as well. Mm. If we look at our own planet, for example, mm. one of the reasons we have life here is probably possibly because we have a large moon next to us. Yeah. And the gravitational forces that are exerted between the Earth and the moon actually stir up our planet. Mm. And that helps and propagates the, the, use, the, the, the driving of carbon chemistry on the planet, mm. yeah. which leads to life itself. Well, that's... 
yes, please go on, please go on. Yeah, but the exciting thing is we've actually found a planet yeah. which is relatively yeah. close to us. Right, well, hang, um, hang on, Andy, let me just pick up on that, please, because, of course, I'm not a, a, a scientist like you are, but you say relatively really? close. Now, hang on, I want to <laughs> find out exactly what 4.2 light years away is. Is that light travelling at the speed that light travels for 4.2 years? That is correct, yes. Well, so, well but, I mean, well that, is, that is so far away, Andy, that's so far away that we're ne- nobody would ever get there, would they? Well, at the present moment, the stage of its technology, it would, it, it would take many thousands of years to get there. Exactly. But we already have designs on the table at the moment which mm. are looking at getting probes into that area in about 20 years. So the technology is moving rapidly to How get How long would it take there. the probe to get there? 20 years, that's what I mean. Oh, I'm We're sorry, looking... I thought you mean in 20 years' time we'll have something ready, but we could send it, something it might... now, could we? Well, it, the technology has been developed now, so given the funding, we could have within 10 years the ability to send a probe there. So within 30 years' time, yeah. maybe 35 years' time, we could, in theory, have a small probe in the Proxima Centauri system having a look. Now, can we then deduce mm. from that that this is four times the distance away from us as Jupiter because it took five years to send a probe there, didn't it? I uh, know that's very different because of the speed. You see, the exactly. point is of getting a, a spacecraft to Jupiter uh, is travelling at a lot less the speed we would see sending a probe, which would be getting um, uh, fractions of the speed of light uh-huh. to Proxima Centauri. Yeah. And this is the idea of the new design of probes. Okay. Yeah. So as technology moves forward, of course. Yeah. Well, it does, absolutely right. Yeah. To, now, if we're sp- going to travel to solar systems, mm, the yes. nearest solar system to us is the target we really want to yeah. go to. OK. Yeah. Now, yeah. speaking of the moon, mm. which you mentioned earlier... And, well, and that gives what's the moon got to do with well, you mentioned them, you weren't listening because you yeah, weren't talking. So you think yeah. about this guy, Andy, is that unless he's talking, yeah. he's not actually listening. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't okay. even remember what he says himself. Yeah. Can you just, just get on with it? Yeah, I'll try and get on with it. So <laughs> the fact that the uh, the moon is uh, in our solar system and in, 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 in our orbit, Ooh. if you like, gives us the ability to sort of uh, sustain life. I was talking to someone yeah. the other day about the moon, and we still yeah. don't really know where the moon came from, do we? No, I mean, it's likely that the Earth-Moon system is more like a double planet system. We formed mm. at more or less the same time. Yeah, right. Possibly when there was a molten Earth, a huge object crashed into the molten Earth yeah. mm. and a splodge came off and actually formed the Moon itself. But, but mm-hmm. we, my understanding like is that the, 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 the construction of the Moon, the rock from which it is made, is nothing similar to what we have on Earth. Uh, not now, but in the early days of the Earth, it's probably made of the, what, what was left of the crustal material of the early form right. of the Earth itself. Mm, right. So it's obviously gone through a different evolution to the Earth then in that point, mm. uh, th- which is why it looks somewhat different to us. But it is certainly looking as if we came from the same coalescing mass, if you like, mm. about four and a half billion years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Coalescing mass it yeah. used to be. Now, let's, uh, let's think big on this one, please, Andy, because I like thinking big, OK? If you think we can get a probe to um, this new planet, uh, Proxima Centauri, Mm. in 20 years, why can't we get a man there? Because if there's a bloke in jail somewhere on Earth who's been told life without, Mm. uh, you know, parole, uh, parole, yeah, why Mm. not say to him, look, we've got an alternative for you, we're going to put you in a spaceship, you're going to go to uh, Proxima Centauri and mm. uh, and report back when you get there whether or not there is life on Proxima. What about that for a thing? What about that as an idea? Yeah, it's a question of mass, you see. The probe that we would send there would be very small, be a very lightweight mass, so mm. therefore the energy we could do is to accelerate at a great speed is much easier. Mm. To get a large mass there of a spacecraft that could yeah. not just carry a human being, but obviously yeah. carry all the life support systems and everything to go with it, yes. that's going to take an awful lot more energy, and that technology is a lot further down the line right. uh, than this prospect of technology okay. to use what is a, a bounce to la- laser sail yes. to actually get it to the target. I it's understand question that. question of masses, really, size. Well, OK, so how many years away are we from having Starship Enterprise able to explore, you know, the final frontier? That, that was also fictional. Yes, I know it was, but at one time, <laughs> flying aeroplanes was fictional, you thickhead. See what, until, see what I'm dealing with here, Until Andy. Leonardo da Vinci worked out you I'm could sure do it. Sure, it wasn't Leonardo DiCaprio. No, it wasn't, yes. Please, uh, please, please right, Andy. So how far away well, from, uh, from having think, a, a Vulcan-controlled um, spacecraft I mean. I mean, that flies reality, at warp speed through I think various reality, uh, uh, you know, new universes? The, rea- the reality is we're probably a century away. A I century, think, okay. That's from not long. That could be like that. So it's a it's a long time yet. That's not long. That's not that long. Technology. A century in in the lifespan of man and and dinosaurs. That is not a no. long time. So no, it's 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 relative to human terms. It's quite yeah. short, but it is. I think we're still a century at least away from that. I yet. see. Can I remind you also, um, uh, Andy? Although you are an expert, that it hasn't. Um, didn't Stephen Hawking, um, you know, put up some theory that we can send tiny laser-driven spaceships 
uh, to these far distant planets mm. who, that could travel as fast as a, a quarter of the speed of light. Well, that's what I've just mentioned earlier, the space oh, truck getting there within 20 years. Oh, that's the 20-year one, is it? Right, OK. Yeah, yeah, so well, you I told you he's not listening. Yeah, of course I'm listening. listening. It's, now, it's... I want to share something with you and my broadcasting colleague, Mr Parry. Oh, really? When I was is in it Mallorca... It is, actually. When oh, I was yeah. in Mallorca... Uh, uh, that's a far distant planet, isn't it, eh? Uh, no, but I'm going to tell you something that <laughs> yeah, you're go going to look very foolish now right, because you're trying to make fun of me. Right, go uh, there was a meteor yeah. shower uh, the week I was there. Oh, yeah. and, uh, yeah, because that was just you drinking too much sangria. No, it was not. And, and it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen um, because it's a very clear sky. Uh, mm. We were in the middle of the countryside, so there was no uh, external lights to trouble us. And for the first time, I saw, I mean, there was loads of shooting stars, but I saw a meteor for the first time. And I have to say, it was quite breathtaking. I saw this big streak of light, very, very bright, much brighter than a shooting star, going across the sky. But the thing that amazed me was, even though it was a dark sky, you could see smoke coming off the back of it. My God. Have you ever seen anything like that? Andy? Yes, I have. You're still there? Yes. So yeah. we lost the signal. So I'm not there. boring. I'm not boring you, am I? No, no. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, of no. course you are. You went to sleep. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. on, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, at one time, the Perseids would produce huge streaks like this and, and huge fireballs going right across the sky, which would be quite spectacular. Mm. And also we've seen satellite re-entries, which are even more spectacular, where you see huge pieces of the satellite coming off, burning off in the upper atmosphere mm. and getting multiple colours coming across. Mm-hmm. So if you're very lucky... That I'd love to see. This was, the, yeah, this was just white, but it was amazing, mm. really amazing. I, they're, they're truly fantastic. I mean, we, we've got a whole history of these. I mean, every 30 or 40 years or so, we usually get quite a spectacular one. The very famous one, for instance, in 1783, that was seen from the top of Scotland all the way to the south of France right. and actually mm-hmm. illuminated the streets as it flew across wow. the sky. Mm. That would be incredible. And by the way, Andy, just mentioning, who did you mention before? Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> it's actually pronounced DiCaprio. Yeah, DiCaprio. Yeah, not him, but the other guy, Matt Damon. He uh, starred in a film where he survived on Mars after the machine went back. How long will it be before we can do that, Andy? Well, actually, it's interesting that going to Mars, we're probably going, not looking at it until the 2030s, maybe a bit later for that to happen. Right. But what was interesting about that film, The Martian, is, yes. is the science in The Martian is absolutely accurate. It's really? Superb. It's a superb study. It's same with the film Interstellar. The science in that is absolutely is bang on the money. That was a great almost... film, but quite difficult to follow at times. Too really, long, but, I thought, as well. But, but the beautiful thing about mm. Interstellar and the Martian, they are good training tools for mm. people if they want to learn something about science because it's yeah. beautifully done. Yeah. So what you're saying is the, the people who made that film literally would have gone to the experts and said yes, what would have happened if this uh, position had been arrived at, and they, and they interpreted it accurately, did they? That's correct. Certainly for the film Interstellar, they actually actually yeah. created computer images which were quite unique for the first time, yeah, which were actually really important for the scientific community because for the mm. first time, they'd actually modelled mm. what a black hole would physically look like as you approached it. Yeah. And the scientists didn't actually know that. Wow. And they were able to see that information back to the scientific community for the very first time. Mm. And because of the data they did for the film, yeah. we think we may have even identified black holes now with the Hubble telescope images. Wow. That's incredible. Amazing, Amazing. stuff. Yeah, well, Andy, listen, yeah, thank Andy, you very thank much you. indeed uh, for spending the time with us, mm. and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Hope so. Be good. Thank thank Andy Lound much. there, who's from the UK Planetary Society. Mm. Fascinating stuff. This, Interstellar, what's that? I've not Interstellar seen Interstellar is uh, Matthew McConaughey. Oh. Uh, it's basically a great, it's a great film. I don't want to give too much away, but mm. basically it's about... The Earth is is dying, right? And they have to go and try and find a new planet, right? To launch a sort of, uh, sort yeah, of a new mission. colony of man, yeah, effectively, yeah. yeah. Because the Earth is is mm. basically drying up, drying up with resources, resources, but mm. also it's getting hotter. Right. And he lives in the middle of sort of the dust bowl of America, yeah, sort of yeah, Oklahoma yeah. or somewhere, right? Yeah. And so it's getting really dusty. Everything's yes. covered in dust. They have these sandstorms, yeah. and so he and a couple of other people are nominated to go up in a in a specially designed spacecraft, right? to try and find, effectively, a planet in a new dimension. Right. Uh, which means they have to go through a wormhole. Yeah. So they have to go through time and into a black hole and out right. the other side. Right. It's, it's fascinating, but it's quite difficult to follow uh, if you're not actually, you know, an astrophysicist. Scientifically minded. Yeah, um, actually, yeah. I went with my son. Yes. And, and we both... Did he understand both, more of it than you did? He did, actually, yeah. yeah I mean, so he was really cool did. about it. And Ooh. funnily enough, uh, the, the bit at the end, which I'm not going to give Ooh. away... Yes. Um, is entirely in... I mean, we've spoken to various astrophysicians and, yes. and sort of space experts before, and they've said the way we talk about travelling in time, yes. this is precisely what it does. Mm. But the problem is you can't exactly come back to where you were. Mm. You can only come back in a different dimension. I see. Mm. So it's fact, I can see you're really confused. Look at well, your little face. No, 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 I can see your little no. eyes are going round and round like, like saucers. No, no, all I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking is you wouldn't get me volunteering for that mission. Why not? 
Well, because I'd like to know that I I'd could like come back. I'd like to send you into another dimension. That, that would be the greatest fear of ever. You know, yeah. there's this great uh, series I see sometimes in repeat on gold called uh, what? Goodnight Sweetheart, OK? No. And it's about that's Gary Sparrow walking through it's a rubbish. time it's wall. It's a guy in a raincoat, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Well, it's a time wall. I don't do like you know, I could show. never do that because if somebody said, look, if you walk through that fence there, you're back into the 1940s, mm. yeah. it would be fascinating to go and visit history yeah. in those days. But supposing you couldn't come back. Well, they'd just stay there. No, I couldn't do that. Why that would not? be my greatest fear. Why? Just imagine what the pubs look like in the 1940s. Just imagine That's what the food was thought. like. Yeah. Well, you eat food from the 1940s. Well, why would you, no, bo- why would you be no, bothered? No, no. Oh, I couldn't possibly go back It'd be, uh, and stay back. I'd mm. love to go back and see it. Yeah, yeah okay. All right, then. Uh, well, listen, there's lots more for us to do. Uh, we've got list- lots of good listography things coming in. Lisa Brinkworth is joining us in the next hour, uh, who's learning to drive at the age of 50. Uh, and then we've got John McEntee coming in, one of our old Fleet Street chums Ooh. who's written a book uh, about his exploits of the, uh, uh, the dark days. This is Talk Radio. Across the UK, online and on DAB. The two mics on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. So to her mother, Tommy said, Tell Laura I love her. Tell Laura I need her. Tell Laura I may be late. I have something to do that can. Ricky Valance, apparently, this was. Who's that? Ricky Valance? Ricky, no, not Valance, no. Yeah. He's thinking of Jack Valance. Oh, yeah, who was that? And Ricky Valance? Jack Valance was, was a cowboy actor, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, he was, yeah, with yeah. a very bent quite, face. He was quite often the man in black. He, yeah, he was a very bent Ricky face. Ricky Valance yeah. was one of those kind of teen heartthrob type singers. Oh, was he? Tell Laura I love her. Great song, that. Yeah, and did, like. you, did you see the backup singer? I could have done that, you know. I could have been famous because the backup you singer... You could have been famous. No, do you know what, he, do you know what the backup singer was singing? Yeah. Bom, 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 bom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, bom, 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 you did. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> bom, you can bom, put bom, it on a, you put it, just put it on a, on a, on a, <laughs> a loop. On a loop. Put a loop in what about there. this from Pete? He says, any yeah. chance of getting an evil scientist on the show sometime? That's a great idea. <laughs> Let's see if we can find one. That's right, yeah. absolutely, yeah. And talking about Jack Palance, by the way, OK? He's one of these yeah. uh, one of these uh, Hollywood guys who refuses to grow old. And do you remember at some, um, some uh, Oscar ceremony mm. a couple of years ago? Yeah. He came on the stage and he dropped down on the floor and started doing one-handed press Oh, uh, really? <laughs> to try and prove, you know, he's about like 88 right. or something, you know, right. trying to prove how yeah. fit he still was. been practising them all year. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah now, now, shocking, listen, now listen, now uh, listen. How about this, from, hang on, Davey yeah. says this, if you were thinking of Matt mm. Damon, why did you bring up Leonardo DiCaprio, you absolute plank of well, a Well, because man? I was comparing one great actor with another, It's not I? because you were thinking of The Departed, was it? Uh, no, I wasn't actually. Have no. you seen that? No. Who's in that? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Matt Damon. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What, they're both in it? Yes. Oh, I didn't realise they've done a film together. Film. It's a film. It's one of the greatest films by Martin Scorsese. The Departed. It's called The Departed. Some people even think, and I might be one of them, mm. uh, but I, I'm not sure, because yeah. Goodfellas is so brilliant. Right. But I've seen it so many times, but The Departed, yeah. I find now myself watching more often. And is that a mafiosi? Uh, it is a little bit, because Jack, Jack Nicholson plays this hard... It's all set, set in Boston. Yes. And Jack Nicholson plays mm. this hard, crazy mm. uh, mafia chief. I see. Uh, yeah. And basically... Matt Damon uh, is uh, both Matt Damon and Leonardo mm. are, are in the police department. Oh, I see. But one of them's rotten. Oh, I see. And one of them's undercover. And do we know which one it is until the end of the film? Well, yes, you get the idea. Oh, I see. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you've just—I mean, it's just fabulous. You've got to watch it. I will. I'll have a look I, at I, it. I would lend you the DVD of it. Yeah. But I've already lent you the, a box set of House of Cards. I've never seen it again. Well, yeah, but I'm only uh, like a third of the way through House of Cards. Oh, you started Cards. watching it? Oh, very, very good. You like it? Excellent. It's yeah. Great, isn't it? The only problem is I got a new telly and I don't know really how to operate it so well, I, watched, a surprise. I watched the first week and then a third of the second week but then I wanted to pick up on after the third of the second week and it went back to the first week what yeah yeah I know I know well you've got probably three episodes on each disc yes right? I have that's right. right yeah yeah so when you when you go um the best thing to do is to stop each episode yes. at the end of each episode. That's right, I know. If you stop in the middle, yeah. sometimes it's hard to go back in. I know, that's right, yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. But anyway, I mean, I'll, it's I'll, not I'll, difficult. I'll sort this. it out, don't worry. Now, listen, I'll tell you what I want to tell you. You re- regard yourself as I'm a bit of a... the time. It's nearly, it's nearly time for the news. Yeah, but you regard yourself as a bit of a gastronome, don't you? No, I wouldn't say that. Do you know what? So I made I... a very nice uh, noodle paella last night. Though. Oh, did you? Yeah. A, a what? A noodle... A noodle paella. 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 That's uh, Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Did you pick that up when you were over in Mallorca? No, I always make the them. recipe. No, uh, I make them. All, no, I've been making them for years. Noodles, I don't noodle understand. Is, noodle is the Catalan version. No, noodles, I do not understand. No, well, noodles are the, and there are noodles. That, it's basically pasta noodles that you buy. Yeah, but you, you see, can't buy the ones you can get in Spain here. You can't get them. So I brought loads of them back. 
Really? Yeah, I've well, got you filled suitcase. your suitcase full of noodles yeah. from Spain. Yeah. What a complete waste <laughs> of time. Well, I didn't fill a suitcase. Well, and, you th- and you think that I've got some strange occupations I mean, I in didn't, life. I didn't, I tell My you, God. I didn't do it deliberately, What right? did you bring back on your holiday? Bring your present, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, I brought you a bag of Spanish noodles. Well, actually, I brought five bags of Spanish noodles. Five bags noodles. of Spanish noodles. What a... But the reason, God. hang on, the reason Get I did that... life, man. No, the reason I did that was because... I remember I told you that we yeah. went out for dinner on the last night. Yes. Because I couldn't bear to eat all the leftovers. Yes. Because we bought too much food. Yes. And as we were chucking a lot of the food away, mm. I thought, you know, these are these are completely, you know, mm. these will last forever. Yes. I'm going to put, I'm going to keep these five bags in here yeah. and put them in my case. Why not? Honestly, what a sadder. What a, what a terrible sadder. You think that's sad? Yeah. Do you know what I've never understood? Mm. Perhaps you can explain as a, you know, you claim to be this great gastronaut. I don't claim to be a gastronaut. What is the difference? I just, I just enjoy cooking and, and I cook some nice things. That's what all. is the difference between noodles yeah. and pasta? Noodles and pasta. Spaghetti. Well, it depends. There's no difference. Yeah, no, it depends. I mean, for example, in Asian cooking, yeah. uh, you can get very different types of noodles. You can get what they call glass noodles. Yeah. Uh, you can get flat noodles. But it's all pasta, You isn't can it? get boiled noodles. Well, not necessarily. It is. Some pasta is made from wheat. Mm. Some pasta is made uh, with eggs in the it. The only difference is... is a, I mean, if you, if you really want to know, yeah. there are millions of different types of pasta and different types of noodles, different types of rice as well. Yeah but, yeah, but noodles, basically, are made by Chinese people. No, they're not. And spaghetti is made by Italian people. No, That's the no, only difference. As, well, see, again... Once, That's again, the only difference. No, in your world, yeah. of, uh, one, over here's black, yeah. over here's white. Yeah. That's what you think. Yeah, exactly. But it's not that simple. Of course it's that simple. No, it isn't. No, you just want to complicate everything. No. You're trying to make out you're an expert on things, which you don't need to be an expert on. Not, not nobody needs to be an expert well, on so noodles, about. right? <laughs> and nobody needs to be an expert on different varieties of right. spaghetti. And oh, I think I'll eaten, just throw this one in as well. Ever, have you ever I eaten? Think, have you ever eaten chow mein? I think I'll just throw this Excuse one me. in. I'm also an expert on different sorts of rice. Oh, really? Balsami rice? Would bit, that be? Would that be? Uh, no, I'm you not. Get a bit anyway. camp now. Ooh. Uh, what did you say? I said, I said, have you ever eaten chow mein? Chow mein. Yes. What is Why it? are you looking at what, me? No, well, I'm trying to think in well, my head what well, chow mein is. It's a Chinese dish. Yes, I know it is. What's it look like, or what's it? Ma- how's it made right, up? Well, well, we've got the news to come, so we'll have to come back to this. Okay. Okay. Porky doesn't know what chow, chow mein looks like, and yet yeah. it's giving me hard time about noodles. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Talk radio. Yeah. Good morning. I'm Mike Graham. He's Mike Harry. You're listening to the Two Mics on Talk Radio. We're going to have another discussion about the uh, incredible difference between noodles and pasta uh, coming up a little bit later on. Uh, in this hour, we'll be talking to Lisa Brinkworth, who's learning to drive for the first time at mm-hmm. the age of fifty. Uh, even though uh, she's not really very good at it. But she's never had to do it before. She's only doing it now, yep. uh, apparently, because uh, all of her, uh, her, her friend's kids uh, are getting a bit disappointed that she can't take them home when well, they come over for a visit. It, it's the old school-run thing, personified. Yeah. It's a taxi of mum and dad, isn't yeah. it? You know, weekend uh, activities, but it, but the weekend sleepovers, stuff, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Exactly and she, right. she can't transport her children around. Exactly right. John McEntee's going to join us yeah. a little bit later on. Uh, he's got a new book out called I'm Not One to Gossip, but uh, mm. it's all about tales from Fleet Street, uh, when Mr Parry and I used to work there, of course. And, uh, of course, uh, we'll also be doing a bit of listography, too. You're listening to Two Mics between Mike Graham and Mike Parry on Talk Radio. The 21st Century Dream Team of Dialogue, Debate and Discourse. The Two Mics on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. So, uh, just to go back to our chow mein conversation. Yes. Chow mein is um, a noodle dish, right? OK. Uh, and you can either have it with pork, you can have it with vegetables, yes. you can have it with beef, you can have it with chicken. Yes, OK. Uh, yeah, I understand all, all that. All of that. And you put it all in the pan and you just uh, you put it in a wok and fry it up, don't Basically, you? Basically, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah, I knew so about that. So, have, have, have you ever tried making it? Um, only in, once again, and you're going to laugh again, in a packet of Vesta yeah. uh, product yeah. curry. Right. Yeah? Uh, what, you've made, you've made chow mein as a curry, you mean? Uh, you no, no, it? no, I've got it in a packet, like, you know, Vesta. So how do you cook that? Uh, I think you uh, boil it in a bag, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what's, what's your problem? You I think boil it in a bag? No, I think you do, I think you do. Okay. Yeah. I think you actually, you know, you prick a couple of holes in the bag and you put it in a pan. I think that's what I think you do. I'm right. pretty sure. Okay. Isn't that the way to do it? I think you get well, a separate, like, bag for the noodles, a separate yeah. bag for the chow mein, don't you? Well, no, the chow mein is noodles. Oh, is it? OK, I thought you'd, like, put the, the you know, the meat I'd and the vegetables to, on top of the... I we should maybe do a video of you shopping yeah. one day yeah, in the maybe, supermarket. Maybe, maybe, Selecting yeah. various different yeah. recipes. Yeah, OK, fine. My, my point was going to be is that basically egg noodles mm. are different from pasta. 
because pasta, generally speaking, is made from wheat. Right. But you can also get some pasta that's, that's made with egg. Oh, can so, you really? But yeah. you can't substitute, for example... I'm going to do a study of pasta and noodles and rice because I feel I have an empty well, gap in my one, knowledge. You're you know the one that I mean? brought it up. Well, no, I, I only... All I said was, what's the difference? I didn't want to lecture on it. Well, it's I'm telling you. It's gone on for 20 minutes. I'm telling you the difference, Because right? I was going to ask you, really, about whether or not you think all the best restaurants in this country are in London mm. because a new uh, survey shows that they're not. Well, we're going to one of the best restaurants in Britain oh, uh, yeah. tomorrow night oh, what's in that Edinburgh. Called? What's that called? Well, you know what it's called. You've no, been given the information. Yeah, well, I'm not I've saying, said I'm, I'm not, not going. What, well, you have to go Well, because you I have might, commitments. I might come along a bit later on. Well, you need to be there. But, because uh, be so filming. what's it called, this restaurant? I'm not telling you what no, it's called. You can't remember, can you? No, I can, no, but I'm, can't. I'm not giving the name out on the air. No, you're not. No, no, no because I'm you not, can't No, remember. because what I don't like to do, as yeah. you seem to think we should do all the time, is tell people exactly where we're going to be. Well, you know, I haven't got problems. There's going to be millions of people in Edinburgh because it's the Edinburgh Festival. Yeah. Now then, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, right? Yeah. Uh, the gastronomic top ten have just been voted well, by the Good Food Guide. Well, you know one of the best restaurants in the world yes. at the moment yes. is in a little place in Kent, and it's a guy who used to work in the city. Yeah. Uh, I read about this a couple of weeks ago. And what's it called? Um, I can't remember the name of it, but the, he, he, right. was a, he was in like a bond trader or something in the city, right. and he got into, a bit like myself, he got himself into a bit of sort of amateur a chefery okay. and quite enjoyed cooking, right. and he decided to buy this kind of um, mm. uh, old run-down pub on the coast of Kent, right. and he's turned it into... Effectively, a Michelin star restaurant. Really? Um, and, and you know, you cannot get a table there uh, for something like a year. But you see, I don't understand this. They're just going out of fashion. Yeah. I mean, at the moment, if you're in London, it's so difficult now to get into the Chiltern Firehouse. No, it's not. Well, apparently. I it went is. there a few weeks ago. Yeah, apparently it is. I it's mean, not. Yeah. Well, you see, you don't believe everything you read. Yeah, well. I was in there just the other week. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. I'm, on I a Friday and Father's... Saturday night. No, I bet it wasn't Friday no, and Saturday night. It was a night. Saturday night. No. It was Father's Day weekend. I'm not sure. And I went there with my daughter. Anyway, I listen... took pictures. You want to see them? No, I don't want to see them. And they date. Yeah, I was there uh, no, on a Saturday no. night. It was no problem. I couldn't care less. Now then, well, well, uh, don't give out misinformation. I'm not giving out misinformation. I'm saying that these places go in and out of fashion. You know what I mean? They do. So how about this one? The most popular restaurant in this country now is Lon Colum. Lon Colum. How yeah. do you spell it? Uh, L apostrophe capital E N C L U M E, and it's in Cumbria. Uh huh. It just says Cumbria. Why doesn't it say like Kendall or you know or or Grasmere or something like I that? Don't know. Well, anyway, that's all. Now then, the next one is Restaurant Nathan Outlaw. What a stupid oh, name Nathan for Outlaw's restaurant. Nathan is brilliant. Is it? Is that down in Cornwall? Yeah. Yeah. Cornwall. He's fantastic. He's a great fish chef. I've got one of his cookbooks, actually. Is that his name? Nathan Outlaw? Nathan Outlaw, yeah. Oh, I blimey. think he might be Australian. Oh, OK. And the next one, Restaurant Sat Baines in Nottinghamshire. Don't know that one. Sat Baines, right. Yeah. Next one. Now, you might know this one. Pollen Street Social, London. No. no. Holland Street Social? No, you see, I mean, as much as you like to think of me as some kind of trendy foodie, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't actually go out for dinner that much, mm-hmm. and I very rarely go to these trendy restaurants, okay. because I can't be bothered with them. Hibiscus London, number no, five. don't know. Uh, number six, the Fat Duck Berkshire, very famous. The Fat Duck, yes, everybody knows I haven't that. haven't been there. Yeah. But, uh, I've not been there either, but that's been, see, that's one of the ones that's been going for a very, very long time. It is indeed. And it's a yeah. brilliant place. Yeah. I'll tell you where I once went, yeah. where I always wanted to go, mm. and it was when I first took over as foreign editor of Daily Express, and mm. we had a fantastic uh, old a retainer in Paris, who you might remember, by the name of Jack G. Jack G, I remember, Do you remember Jack him? very well, yeah. And yeah. he was kicked out. He was mm. one of the first UPI um, uh, people into China. OK. But he was kicked out of China yeah. working for UPI yeah. uh, for getting involved in a bit of horizontal refreshment really? on the office desk. Excellent. Uh, with a young mm. secretary. I see. Was she um, Chinese? Uh, I don't know. Mm, I didn't okay. ask him that question. Okay. Yeah. But when I became foreign, uh, um, I didn't said foreign secretary, yeah. but I became <laughs> yeah. foreign editor. Yeah. Um, he was very terribly charming. Yes. And he let my parents go and stay in his flat over in Paris really? when he wasn't there. Because uh, I said, oh, mm. my parents are coming over. He said, oh, I'm not here. Would they like mm. to? And he was, mm. lived in Luxembourg mm. Gardens, which is, I think, in the 7th of Rondes. It was a beautiful right. place. Yeah. And let them stay there. And then mm. he said, you know, I'd love to take you uh, and your partner out for uh, for dinner when mm. I come to London. Because mm. he wanted, basically, to make sure that I kept him going. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. Know, it was, yeah. So he said, why don't, why don't you pick a restaurant? And mm. I said, well, I'll tell you where I've always wanted to go, mm. Jack. Mm. La Gavroche. Mm. Which is in Mayfair. Yes. And it's, it's the Rue Brothers, one of the most famous exactly, sort of yeah. French restaurants in the world. And this would have been early, sort of mid-90s, I guess. Okay. Um, and we went there, three of us, 400 quid. Right. Uh, he paid. And did he shudder when you said La Gavroche? I couldn't see him. He was on the phone. Um, he, he, no, because he was so charming and yeah. sort of, you know, yeah. urbane. But ha- had he been there before? Well, he knew exactly where it was. Is it a French restaurant? It's a French yeah, It's I the see, Rue yeah. Brothers. It's a French restaurant. Yeah, OK. Yeah, and it's very white tablecloths. I remember I had lobster bisque to yes. start with, which lobster was terrific. Bisque. Yeah, and, uh, and who the, was your partner on that particular food, night? My wife. 
Oh, really? I was married then. Oh, I see. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't make any difference. Yeah, I see what you mean. No, yeah, yeah. no, but yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. ridiculously it's savage thing to say on no, no, a family no. show. No, 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 it's not. No, no, it's most unusual, actually. You took your wife out if you were offered a night out in London. You I know? think you might have said you and thought, your wife. Thought, thought you might have taken opportunity of, you know what I mean? You know, your rather wayward no. behaviour. Oh, that's a shocking thing to say. Members of the opposite yeah. sex. Uh, right, the next one is Restaurant Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, of course. In London. Is Where's that? that? Uh, is that the one in Claridge's? Well, I thought it might be the one down, um, you know, near the uh, I mean, there's a Gordon Ramsay restaurant just down the road from us. Yeah, in Narrow Street. No, not in not that one. No, but there's one literally just down the end of. Oh, um, I know exactly where you mean. Uh, for um, Union, Union, Street. Street. Union Street, Union Street, 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 Union yeah. Street Cafe. I've been there. Yeah, well, it says That's restaurant nice. Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Next one, and I've never heard of this either. Head Own London. Head Own. No, I don't know. H e d o n e. No. Ninth one. Now you may know this one. Yeah. Restaurant Andrew Fairley in Andrew Teesside. Fairley, yes. Yeah. Well, Andrew Fairley used to be the chef at Glen Eagles. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, well, and his, restaurant, now. His, his restaurants are very good. And the last one, I'm yeah. delighted to say, number 10, Fresh on Merseyside. Uh, that one I don't... Maybe we should F-R-A-I-C-A-C. go there when we, when we just show Liverpool. Well, maybe you should, yeah. But anyway, it's, what it says is, it says that the, you know, the culinary excellence is now spreading right away from the capital and uh, is in other places. Oh, it tells you what the towns they're in here. Er, er, er. So, uh, oh, hang on, no, these are some others. Uh, what's this? Three restaurants housed in old shipping containers uh-huh. in Cook House in Newcastle, Craftwork right. Street... Uh, Craftwork? C- Craftwork, Craftwork Street Kitchen in Truro, bon, bon, and bon. Cricket in Brixton, South London. Yeah. Cricket, have you heard of that? I, mean, I haven't, no. Mm. But, I mean, the thing is, that, I mean, I th- I'm delighted, right, that food has yes. become such an important part of our culture because for I so long it's a waste of time no it's not for so long mm. we were renowned as a place where you couldn't get decent food yes you know? and now London is one of the world centres of food and I think that's great yeah. Yeah. because you know you, there's street food out there all, mm. everywhere you go uh, there's Borough Market yep. there's you know it's all of these great restaurants there's pop up restaurants you know yes. what they are Yes, I know what they are. What's yeah. a pop-up restaurant? Pop-up restaurant is where you just go and literally take the table and the tablecloths and the cutlery and everything. You set up for a night, and uh, well, usually slightly more for a night, yeah, more than a night. Yeah, and you invite people in for a bit of nosh, and then whoosh, you're off again. Yeah, you know? well, well, almost like squatting in a well, building. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. sort of it's more like for the summer. Than yes, it is, uh, for the, but I, th- I think it's a terrific. Yeah, you, you do. Know? I mean, I know that all you want to do is mm. go to the same place, have the same food. Fish and chips for, for lunch, fish and chips for dinner. There's not a lot go wrong. back the next day no. and have fish and chips for lunch and fish and chips for dinner. There, but, but I think it's delightful that we are now is, a much uh, more cultured place. There is not a lot wrong with that, honestly, believe me. All right. uh, by the way, you know, I was it's talking to you... the time, by the way. Yeah, you yeah, don't worry about the time. No, I'm worried about the time. the time. All right, all right. But, you know, I was talking to you about uh, brain jacking before. Yeah. Did you read the story about the guy who was, um, who was brought out of a coma by uh, jump-starting his brain. Really? Yeah. No, but tell yeah. me about it in a minute. Yeah. Uh, this is Talk Radio with yeah. the two mics. Yeah. Talk Sport on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. Freedom for sport. Can we kick it? Yes, we can. Talk Sport. Talk Radio, we are the two mics, as we say. We've been having a few problems with the podcast, but there will be one out later on, hopefully glitch-free uh, and hopefully on time. Uh, we are working on it. We are uh, sweating over it, so uh, whatever course. we can do of to course. make it better. Now, yeah. uh, I've got a story for you, just before we go back oh, to yeah, your, go uh, yeah, go uh, your brain jacket. Yeah, go on. First fatality linked to Pokemon Go. Uh, in Japan, oh dear, uh, apparently news, an elderly woman was run over by some guy who was driving a car while trying to capture Pokemon Good in God. Tokushima City. Yeah, that's not good news, uh, arrested is it? This guy called Keiji Gu, uh, yeah. after the car he was driving, struck two elderly women as mm. he was playing the game. Well, you see, that does shocking, not surprise it? me. Mm. Uh, it, it is shocking and uh, very sad, but it doesn't surprise me because one of the things I've been campaigning against for years uh. are pedestrians who um, walk around staring at their phone with earphones in, right? Yeah. Uh, or cyclists, even. Uh, cyclists do the same, but the worst are the joggers. Because what the joggers do is they, they run along in a world of their own, right? Yeah. They've usually got earphones in, and mm. the, the, the earphones obviously are connected to some sort of device. Well, some of them are listening to our podcast, so you shouldn't be too hard on them. Sorry? Some of them may be listening to our podcast. Listen to our podcast, absolutely fine. So but it shouldn't be too hard. No, it's usually music, which is the problem. You see, if they're no, listening... It's, it's, no, I'm, I'm an expert distra- on, on audio receptor. Oh, yeah? Receptor. 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 Audio receptor. receptor. And if you're listening to words, you can also hear... 
hear the movement of traffic, horns, warning signs, that kind of stuff. Mm. You're listening to music, you can't. You can hear warning signs. Yes, you can. Yeah. What's a warning sign? Well, a warning sign, hear. for instance, might be an approaching uh, police siren, yeah. which means that vehicle is going to be travelling a lot faster than the rest of the vehicles mm. on the road and that kind of stuff. Oh, you know what I mean? Okay. But if you're listening to music, yeah. I'm afraid that signs which uh, sounds which sound like that mm. merge into the music, which you think is part of the music that you're listening to. Okay? I see. Right. So, so no problem at all listening to our podcast. No mm. problem at all listening to any audio. But watch it if you listen to music. It blocks out everything else. I see. Yeah, uh, I've got a, t- a text here, a tweet rather from yes. Heady, who says um, yes. MG might be a gastronome, but Porky's just a gnome. Why does he hate real and interesting food? <laughs> I, I, no, uh, in no way do I. It's just that I don't spend my life in pursuit of uh, you know exotic food and and, and a sizable, well, maybe you should broaden your sizable, horizons. Sizable uh, uh, portion of my income in uh, in paying for it, eating it, and uh, and acquiring it. Mm. You know, I, I think it's crazy. Yeah, you spend all your money on clothes, don't you? I spend a lot of my money on clothes. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why? Well, it don't look like it. Actually, I've got a quiz for you to yeah. find out whether you are a, a man of manners. OK. Uh, I'll do it in a minute. You yes, can tell okay. me about your um, uh, the story you're going to tell me well, about. Well, no, no, I was going to say was... Uh, no, the brain shock thing. Brain what shock, I was going to yeah. say was, as we were talking about brains earlier, I uh, it came to my attention. In fact, somebody pointed out to me, a very interesting story, Mike, about brain jacking. Did you know that um, doctors have now perfected a way to try and get people out of comas by... Well, you know, you, you know when you see in ca- on Casualty, they put the uh, yeah the defibrillators. Is your entire hang world on, governed on, on, and and, and sort on. of informed mm. by fictional television? Well, hang on, we just had a scientist on who said that the some of the scientific principles illustrated mm. in The Martian yeah. were brilliant. Yeah, but that Did doesn't mean that doesn't mean Did Star Trek is the same uh, bundle of uh, I d- I uh, of, say it was. Of, of wood, does but, it? But I think you'll find that the experts who advise on Casualty are in fact the very best. Okay, so in Casualty, when you see old Charlie, you know putting the... Uh, is he t- still in it? Yeah, I think he is. Are I think you sure done, you're think not he... watching old episodes? No, no, I think he's done his thousandth, eth- thousandth mm. episode. You Deepest know? depth. <laughs> yeah, 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 surely. <laughs> I mean, uh, he, had a, he had an imperious start to his uh, movie career because he was murdered by Bob Hoskins in the shower, <laughs> wasn't he? He slashed his throat with a broken well, bottle. Good Friday. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, smashed him. Oh, I got your kid. Mm. Boof, you know, and then... Uh... You don't have to have such graphic violence <laughs> on the show, you know. <laughs> no, no, you Family don't. show. Exactly. So anyway, so you understand what I'm saying. You're the defibrillators for the man whose heart has stopped yeah. and then everybody he goes one, two, three, stand oh, away. They go clear. They go stand away. They, they go d- clear. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's the same thing. Isn't stand it? Yeah. away. In case they get shot. Well, stand away is what they do <laughs> when you're in Eton. <laughs> yeah. When they're about to fire the old clay pigeons. That's right. In case they get an electric shock, you know, mm. and, and then boom, there's a big like bounce off the mm. bed and all that as the heart started. Oh, yeah. Well, they can do that now apparently with the brain. So uh, what, here with, are, with the same kind of pad, paddles. Well, here are, a patient in coma has been brought round after the doctor's jump-started his brain. Yeah, but that might just be a phrase. No, 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 using sound waves. Yeah, so, so it wasn't using the same thing at all. Yeah, let me, let, me, let me read it this to you. It wasn't the same thing. Hang on, I'll explain it to you Go if on, you then. just stop shouting. It wasn't the dang thing, wasn't the dang thing. <laughs> all right? Now then, on the day of the treatment, the 25-year-old man's responses improved measurably. Mm. Within three days, full consciousness, and he was able to communicate by nodding, nodding like this. Or shaking his head. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, you can't really see that on the radio. No, he can't actually. Uh, uh, he even made. <laughs> I don't know what odds this is. He even made a fist pump gesture. That's to, like Tim Henman, isn't to, it? To say goodbye to one of his doctors. It's like it's like uh, <laughs> Tim Henman. Yeah. The, yeah. The weak fist pump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, before the procedure began, the unnamed patient, so we don't know who he is, uh, showed only minimal signs of being conscious mm. and of understanding speech. So, yeah. uh, a bit like uh, you, uh, then. <laughs> That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Um, he could perform small, limited movements when asked. Now, the treatment involves sending pulses mm. of ultrasound into the man's thalamus. What? Thalamus. Thalamus? The thalamus is uh-huh. the brain's sensory hub that relays signals from different regions of the body and regulates waking, alertness and arousal. OK. So, Professor Martin Monty, uh-huh. University of California, L.A., yeah. UCLA, yeah. Uh, said the changes were absolutely remarkable. Mm. He said, uh, technology helped other people recovering from comas. The saucer-sized ultrasound transmitter could be incorporated into a helmet, so they put a helmet on his head, right, Yeah. and replicated as low-cost way to help wake up patients, mm. even those in a vegetative or minimally conscious state. Now, right. that is fantastic. It is. Because you know, you know, I tell you about when I went mm. for a mind massage. 
And my, don't you think this is brilliant? The people yeah, who sit is. by the bedside of their relatives yeah. for years and years yeah. and years, hoping they'll just wake up. Yeah. This brings new hope. Well, it does. And I mean, yeah. I think those people mm. who have done that would yeah. say that actually, you know, the, the holding the hand and, yeah. and, you know, touch and also talking to talking them. Talking in their ear all the time. Yeah. And they're convinced that, that that kept them going. And yeah, when exactly. they do eventually, not always, but it's when they do yeah. come out of the coma. That's then, right. Um, the people well, in the coma. Your John Lennon record yeah, and all that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's nothing nothing that we don't, I think there's lots of things we don't yet know about the brain. I think you're right. But there was a guy that set himself up in Wall Street when I was over in the States. Oh, yeah. Uh, where people would go to, to de stress. Wall Street shuffle. Yeah, all right. Da, da, yeah, all right. Da. Yeah, yeah, go on. Down. Mm. And uh, so basically, you go in there, right? Mm. And you lie down in a sort of an, effectively an airline chair, but right. a very nice, comfortable airline okay. chair. Okay. And you go sort of flat, and you put this music on, which is like Enya style music. Yeah. But then you put these glasses on you, and you were supposed away, to close your. Away, yeah, all right. You don't sing every single go thing on, I'd suggest, go on, right? Go on. And the glasses were with with lights on the inside of them, and the glasses would make sort of coloured patterns, right? Like in Did circles. you have your eyes open, or was it no, through your you eyelids? No, close them. You, had, you close them, but you could well. still somehow feel. Of the movement of the light. Well, no, if you close your eyelids and lie in the sun, you mm. know the sun's very bright. Yeah. Yeah, go yeah. on. So They're translucent, when, your eyelids. Yeah, a bit. so, so mm. when there's, uh, you know, so when the light's moving around, yeah. you know, you can still kind of feel it. Mm. And it was an amazing experience. And I, I walked out of there feeling mm. as if I'd been given some kind of drug. Yeah. You know, very, very relaxed. So, what do you say, a mind massage? Yeah. There's no physical touch or anything no, like no, that? No, no. It was simply that you lay in one place and you had this eye thing going on yeah. and the music. Yes. And you lay there for half an hour. Mm. And it was magnificent. Well, in what way? What did you feel afterwards? Well, I just felt completely relaxed, completely at one with the world. You said it's a good world. thing to feel completely relaxed Well, in you've life. never been completely relaxed in your life. Yeah, I have, yeah. You can't relax. I, I you can't stop doing things. Every morning when I uh, walk down from London Bridge, OK, I pass a place where, do you know what they do? They put you on a little, like, raft uh-huh. and they push you into a, a dark pool. It's like it? an isolation tank. Is that what it is? Yeah. And you have felt... you tried that? No. No, well, you should. And you float. Well, have you tried it? Uh, no, but I've always wanted to. Well, you float around for about like well, you're sort of twenty minutes. You're sort of suspended in water, and the thing about that is that yeah. it's also very relaxing. But you don't have to move. They do it in such a way that you're. I don't think you're tethered. I'm not quite sure what they do, but you basically don't move. Mm. I think you'd enjoy it. But yeah. you see, so you couldn't sit still for five minutes. Well, no, I, I, I just don't. I think the idea of you know, you know, transcendental meditation, all that kind of stuff. You know, what's wrong with it? Well, well, the problem is that it might give you peace of mind on the short term it might even give you a, you know like hallucinogenic type feelings yeah. without being taking hallucinogenics but if that emptied your mind of all your real thoughts and all that that's dangerous well, no, it's because not. you have a life to get on with and you can't no. pretend oh i don't have any responsibilities i don't have any cares i don't have any you know things to worry about because anybody who's walking around like that mm. is a half bait yeah it's no wonder you're so unwell. No, I'm not you unwell. Are. You said you I was unwell. Don't well, be ridiculous. You are physically unwell, no. No, mentally no. unwell. No. You know, you're a basket case. Don't be ridiculous. Anyway, uh, more of this to come. Uh, we'll be talking to Lisa Brinkworth coming up very shortly, and we'll give Porky a manners test to find out whether he is, in fact, a well-mannered person. Good idea. This is Talk Radio. We are the two mics. Of course, listography coming up a little bit later on. We've got lots and lots of very, very good ideas. We're thinking uh, and moving towards... Uh, favouring one which is about yep. Scotland because we're going up to Edinburgh tomorrow we uh, so we may well do one with a bit of a Scottish theme but yes. keep sending them in because uh, yes. we'll pick the best one. Yes. Uh, right now though we have another guest on the show mm. uh, because it was a very interesting piece that she wrote in a paper the other day. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Brinkworth uh, uh, is, uh, is joining us right now. Lisa, uh, a very good morning to you. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. Now, you've got rather an interesting story to tell because most people now, I suppose, um, would say that at some point or other in their life they've learned to drive. You're learning to drive for the first time uh, at a a rather, uh, shall we say, later stage of your life than most people. Well, in fact, this is the... the, 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 Well, I I, I first started um, learning to drive when I was 17 and 18, but Mm. had one disaster after another. Uh And, in fact, went through various instructors before being told that I was unteachable and wouldn't be safe really? on the roads. Why did they why did they think you were unteachable then? Um well I consistently for some unknown reason at the time kept steering um towards the right side of the road right. and thinking I had lots of space um on the right and no space on the left and I was constantly going over into the right lane mm. and thinking that that looked absolutely right oh, and okay. in fact it wasn't at all. So mm. could you not see the white line or something? No, well, I, I saw it, but it wasn't in the place where I oh, saw right. it in the place where it wasn't. So you had some sort of peripheral vision problem or something well, like that? or Well, I thought, I thought that's what it was. Yeah. I thought it was had to be to do with my vision. Yeah. Um, 
But it was also terrifying, and, and I, uh, after the instructors, my parents pleaded with me to give up yeah. lessons. I, I spent the subsequent 31 years travelling on foot. Right, OK. So, um, that, so that, if you don't mind me saying, that gives your age away as approaching 50, then. Is that OK? That, yeah. Oh, that's right, yes. That's right, fine. Yeah. So can yeah. I ask you, then, the next... I see now next... somebody else's picture in the paper, uh, then, is it? Uh, uh, no, no, no. It's a lovely picture that we saw of you <laughs> this week. But, Lisa, I have to ask you now, then, if you've got nearly to half a century without driving... Why now, after the nightmares which you must still carry in your head from the age of 17, have you decided that you've got to learn to drive? Well, I lived in London until four years ago, and so it was much easier to get around um, by public transport, taxis and walking. Mm. Um, And then we moved to the countryside. Um, No public transport. I have to walk miles to get anywhere. And I have three children who, when we first moved here, were at different schools. Mm. So getting them from A to B in a short space of time on foot was increasingly difficult to say the least and um i tr- i try to well i try to use local taxi services but they were tired of me um got highly irritated by ferrying around three children and it is amazing isn't it how unhelpful some taxi services are in some parts well, yes, of the country I mean, that, that's another story i should I, I i should be writing about yeah. that as well yeah, yeah. and um they, i tried everything um and, and what i really noticed was that while the parents at school are willing to help. Obviously, I can't rely on them. I don't want to rely on them and never have. Mm. But um, there was definitely a... I was regarded with some sort of suspicion mm. or um, I, I was I was a real outcast, actually, because yeah. where mm. I live, everybody drives. I mean, the minute yeah. you're, you're 18, you drive, and then you don't stop until you're 95 or whatever. But, sure. Um, so I, I was I was a social prior, and it and it was became almost every day I was being told, well, isn't it time you you started to drive? And wouldn't it be nice if you could join in the carpooling and this kind of thing? And I yeah. thought, well, actually, I've I've really got to give this another go. Well, I suppose I things was. like if your children were at sleepovers, or if there was a you know a, a football match or a, a hockey match or something like that, and you all had to uh, you know pool your resources as parents, you were constantly the person who was being given a lift, were you? Um, well, no. I, well, I, I would rely on taxis, um, mm. but uh, very often I'd be. They would let me down. That they weren't available. Oh, uh, yeah. And then, so yeah. So then I, I would have to speak to parents to say, "Please help me out," which was which was mm. highly embarrassing after a while, and something I didn't want to do. Mm. Um, so I just thought, right, it's time. I've got to drive. Mm. But how are you going to get rid of that fear from seventeen? And have you started taking lessons again? Yes. And well, is it I've, and I've, is it still with you? Yes, well, I, so I started, I was terrified to get behind the wheel, and this was after four years of calling the, the local instructor and then, and then cancelling. Mm. So this was going on for four years, and finally, um, w- one mother sort of said to me, you know, I, I really think you ought to know that we're all getting a bit fed up of it and you, you yeah. do need to start driving. Mm. So I, I thought, OK, well, I'm, I have to go for it now. So, so I, I got behind the wheel for the first time, was terrified, and my instructor... Well, he could see straight away I was going over to the right side of the road. So what, mm. what we do now is he holds up his iPad, which is sort of um, emulates the steering wheel, and he so he steers in the direction I need to be going, and I sort of follow him. Right. Um, and, and what we do is he tells me, I tell him what I can see, where I can see it. And so he says, well, actually, you're completely wrong. So you need to come right over to the left, even though I think I'm driving into something. Mm. And, and I've now learned to trust him. So if he says to me, drive straight over to the left, mm. even though I think I'm driving into a car, I trust him that I'm not. So, so it's not like a it's not like a, a, a defect of your sight, is it? Because presumably oh, no. if, if that was the case, right, um, every time you went to reach for a glass of wine, mm. you'd miss, oh, yeah. wouldn't you? Well, I would, and, and that's never been the case, fortunately. Thank so, goodness for that. Mm. <laughs> yes. mm. so, um, so no, so I then I consulted a cognitive uh, neuroscientist mm. who... Uh, who realised that the problem was to do with the wiring of my brain, mm. not my eyes. Right. And apparently, I, well, I suffer with, with well, something, I don't know if you can see, I suffer with it, but I, I have, it's likely to do with a condition called um, pseudo-neglect, which I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not very good in science, but mm. in, I try to explain it in, in layman's terms in the piece, and it's, it's sort of, as much as I can gather, it's a mild asymmetry in spatial attention in which one side of space is favoured more. Right. So in my case, the width of the road, causing mm. errors in judging distance and size. But, but it, it, it's, not, um, it's not something that, that's a real problem with the brain. It's just the way it's wired, but it yeah. can be inconvenient. But it's one of the few things um, 
the few conditions which actually improves with age. Right. So, so this neuroscientist explained to me that in 20 years' time, the bias should have evened out, mm. and I could could be ready to take my test at 70. Well, you see, I find all this quite well, another remarkable. 20 years to go. Another 20 years to go. But but yeah. what what's going to happen, Lisa? If you even if you pass your test, yes. will you need somebody in the passenger seat well, yes. all the time, simulating yes. a direction in which to drive? Well, yes, I, I must have that. I, I'm also looking at. I've asked my husband if we can buy a, a dual control car. Um, I've, I've looked into all these things, yeah. and I have to say, my, my ten year old son um, mm. is 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 so sort of uh, is frustrated having a mother that that can't drive him around. That yeah. He's he's already saving up for his first car, and assures me that by the time he's seventeen, yeah. he'll be doing he'll be driving us around. But right. um, so. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, and I'm very worried about it. And, and the other thing it. is, I ha- and I have to ask this, mm. Lisa, do you think that the authorities should allow you to drive with this, so, you know, this terrible condition you've got? Because it does, to me, still sound like, you know, you're, you're, you're a, a car crash literally waiting to happen. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm now on my... I had my, what was it, 18th driving lesson yeah. yesterday. Yes. And it is, I am, with practice gradually improving because I've right. learnt I've learnt not to listen to what my brain wants to tell me. So where where I think I am, I know I'm actually a couple of metres out. Right, right I see. So mm-hmm. and what it's now not, it's learning, not terribly reassuring for the rest of us though, is it? Well now I'm learning <laughs> to now I'm learning to, to, to move over beyond where I think I should be to the left. I'm actually what my instructor and I are now noticing is that I'm actually well within the lane, inside the lane, and for my last few lessons, mm. I have been staying in my lane and going straight. Mm. Well, that's, that, oh, that is brilliant, honestly, because yeah. I was going to say to you, apart from anything else, what about the anxiety that this situation's been causing you for the last sort of 30 years of your life? The anxiety yes. of people putting pressure on you and yes. taxis not turning up and yes. angry taxi drivers oh, shouting at you? Oh, I've been banned from two taxi companies and... Oh my goodness! I, 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 the stress was 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 dreadful. Yeah. I mean, I, absolutely mm. awful. Because when you have the three young children and you're asking a, a car to stop at this school and then that school and they forget their kit and they have to go back inside and someone's yeah. dropped the school bag and we have to go back for that and yeah. even though I pay waiting time and the extra, they have a, a job to get to. Yeah. Um, so. So it, so from what you're saying, there's no test imminent then. Well, well I, I, I was hoping there might be, but uh, when I when I asked uh, my instructor when I should put him for my test, mm. um, he look, he gave me a, sort of a look and said, um, well, I don't think we'll be having that conversation for a while yet. Well, mm. mind you, he's making a lot of money out of you, so I'll be careful of, of his advice, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, well, what I, what I would say about him is that um, he is... He, I, I actually have a, I put a lot of trust into him. He he has he's remarkably cool and calm mm-hmm. in any situation. And whereas the previous instructors um, got very riled and angry, mm. which made the matter worse, he isn't, and he's extremely patient. Mm. And we're focusing, as we should be, very much on safety. So every okay. lesson is really it, it's geared towards okay. safety. You, yeah. you must have considered the next proposition, Lisa, and that is that instead of spending all this money on taxis, did you ever th- think of hiring a driver of your own, you know, to yes, chauffeur yes. you around? Well, yes. Uh, um, well, we were very fortunate, in fact, because when we first moved here, our next-door neighbour was at that time a private taxi driver. So he... That was wonderful for the first year because yeah. he, he, was, he, he did have the patience to drive us around and wait and do all that. Mm. He was a friend as well. Yeah. Um, then he gave that up. Um, and, in fact, I have put notices in our local news agent window um, asking for maybe, you know, a retired person who could drive us. Yes, we exactly. haven't had any takers. So. Well, maybe Porky, you could offer us a driver around. Now, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I have a full-time job to do. But, <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, Lisa, I suppose the only thing you can say is that it sounds to me like you've got a reasonable lifestyle. Imagine if you couldn't afford these taxes. Well, I know. Well, I know, and and it's a real, and in fact, since writing this article, mm. I've had quite a few people who've who've written in who've written into the Times where it appeared say, mm. saying um, that they have had this problem for years mm. and 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 dreadful things that they've been they've been excluded from social events yep. because they can't reciprocate lists. Mm. Their child is 
is never offered a, a lift anywhere, even in desperate circumstances, because people don't want it to become a habit. Yeah. And I think I think people have a do have a really hard time. So I, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. And in fact, I, a, a vast amount of, of, of my money has, has gone yeah. into taxes. Yes, sure. Yes, you're right. I mean, do you have a partner in life? And, and yes. is, is, uh, is he able to help with the... I mean, you know, he's, he's got responsibilities to the children as well as you. How, yes, how much well, of the burden can he take off his shoulders? Well, well he, he, he does a, he does a, a, a full-time job. He, he, he leaves... He leaves very early in the morning, gets back in the evening. Right, OK. But what, what, we have, what we have started using now is the school bus service, which right. is a great help. But again, if that's late or delayed or there's a problem with that... Yeah, um, yeah you have a Would it make a, a difference if you moved closer to a met more metropolitan-type area? Yes, well, well, it's one thing I, hadn't, I just hadn't factored in when we first moved here, and it was only once we moved here that I realised, yeah. oh, my goodness, what have I done? Yeah, yeah. sure, sure, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a massive problem. Um, I, 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 I'm not going to reveal where you live, Lisa, but mm. uh, I'm not going to come anywhere near that area, <laughs> just in case you're driving around. Sure. Mm. Well, well in, in, in perhaps I, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a little more confident. I yeah. think there ah. is an improvement, mm. so I, perhaps I'll get back in touch when I pass my test. Oh, okay, please yeah. do, please yeah, do. Come, and, come and, and give us a ride around town. Yeah, yeah and, uh, well, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, my friend there has been, you know, a little bit sort of um, unkind. I think Lisa. I think he's trying to take the. I'm not your you. friend. Don't call I, me a friend. Okay? I, uh, Just don't call uh, me your friend. I, I, don't worry about that, Lisa. <laughs> he's always like this. But I have the greatest sympathy for you because I know that the irritations of domestic life often bring more pressure on a well, person how, how do you know? than their work because they do. Yeah. No, you live on yeah. your own, though. Well, well people have neighbours and neighbours get on their nerves. People have driving <laughs> situations yeah. gets on their nerves. Mm. You know, and yeah. uh, and I wish you the very best. Look, how old is your oldest child, Lisa? Do you see the time, he's, 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 he's ten, right. and he's already saving. He's already saving for this car that he's going to. Okay, buy but he's still got another sixteen years, even if he can do it with a learner driver sitting alongside him. So well, another yes. six years. Yeah, but anyway, look, <laughs> very best of luck, and please do come back to us. Uh, we'll ask our producer to leave you with a, a, a contact number because we'd love to announce to the world that mm. you have cracked it. I, and I would, lo- I would absolutely love nothing more. That would be brilliant. Yes. Thank okay. you, Lisa. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Good indeed. luck. Mm. Uh, this is, of course, talk radio. Uh, You're one very of the things, unkind uh, to that lady. What do you mean unkind? You know, I don't I'm, want to be driving I'm around. I'm not coming anywhere near where you live. Well, you this know, is a woman who drives, me... because she drives yeah. on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, but, I mean, she's trying to conquer this terrible affliction she's yeah. got. She doesn't do it by choice. She doesn't go around driving well, into, on you, the wrong side of the I've road by choice. I've got a couple choice. of t- tweets here, one from Freddie. Yeah. And don't, this woman, don't let this woman anywhere near a motor car, mm. especially Fiat Puntos. <laughs> and Kenny, who's an Everton <laughs> fan, says this woman is a complete idiot. Get her off the ASAP. She's not a complete idiot. No, you've obviously fallen for her. You no, see, that was why I gave you the opportunity, which yeah. you missed. Yes, yes, you know, I opened yes. the door for you, yes. and you've refused to walk through it. Don't be you silly. should have offered to go and drive her around. She's oh, yeah, very sure. Nice I'll, yeah, I'll move across. Te- uh, no, tell, 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 tell us where she lives. I'll move across the country. And, and, uh, she has a, um, a, a complaint called pseudo-neglect. It's a mild asymmetry. She was, she's already said all that. Hang on, it's a mild asymmetry. I don't know why I'm so fascinated by this story. A mild asymmetry in spatial attention in which one side of space is favoured, causing distortions. She said all that. You say, well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, you're afflicted with that. You should have sympathy. Ten minutes on this. Not, not mocking no. the poor woman. I'm not mocking her. Of course you were. But I mean, you seem unbelievably infatuated with this particular story. Don't it's a fascinating story. Well, it's not that fascinating. Somebody can't drive. No, I do. I think it's well, incredible. People who are blind can't drive either. Yeah, I know, but I mean, they, they, they have a very obvious affliction. What happens with this woman is she's mm. perfectly normal until she gets behind the wheel of a car and then she becomes uh, confused. Well, a lot of people are perfectly normal until they get behind the wheel of a car. Yeah. And then they get involved yeah. in all sorts of obscure behaviour. Yes, this true. is Talk Radio. True. Uh, lots more to come. Yeah. This is Talk Radio. We are the two mics. This photography coming up is going to be something Scottish, I think, in the next uh, hour. Yeah. Uh, and then John McEntee is going to be here. Yeah. Uh, our old friend from the Daily Express, who's now on the mail. Yeah. Uh, he's got a book out. Uh, it is called I'm Not One to Gossip But. That's right. Uh, full yeah. of all sorts yeah. of uh, uh, tales of the other known uh, and of the stars as well. Now, yeah. I mentioned to you before uh, that uh, I was going to give you a little quiz and a test okay. on how classy you are, okay. because according to a new report, yeah. class is no longer dictated by wealth, mm-hmm. as style, demeanour and worldliness can now be telltale signs right. of a sophisticated person. Right. Right. Yep. So, uh, these are the signs of a classy man. So, first okay. of all, question number one. Yeah. Are you respectful of women? Oh, very much so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Question number two. Mm. Do you hold the door open for others? Yes, always. Always? Always. That's not true. No, it is. You didn't hold the door open for me this morning when we came in. You opened the door and rushed through it. Uh, where were you? I was behind you. Well, what were we doing? Where were we going? Oh, we were going from one part of the uh, the building to another. Well, you must have been not keeping up then or no, something. No, 
Or... No, if I open the door, yeah. I always let you go through first. Oh, it? no, no, I, I wouldn't let you go through first. Why, Why should I do that? Well, because that's the, my sign of good manners. No, it's not. If it's All right, a, so if we'll put that down as a no. No, no, if it's a lady following me, then she goes yeah. through first, but I, I don't yeah, have doors no, for you. The word, the word I have is... doors for myself, and you follow. The word is others, OK? Others. Well... Not just women. Yeah, well... OK? Yeah. So that's a, that's a no, so that's one one. Uh, question, uh, question number three, do you take pride in your appearance? Always, <laughs> always. No. I'm saying no for that. No, 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 you're not, because no. I've answered yes. No, but it doesn't matter what you say, no, right? No, no, it does. It does. Well, look, look, look at the state of you. I mean, when no, we no. did that video before the show, yeah. uh, you already got a few tweets saying, for heaven's sake, Paul, would you not iron your shirt before you come to what work? What do you mean, iron my shirt? You haven't ironed your trousers. What? They're, 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 those, you've just pulled a pair of crumpled trousers out of your, your linen basket these this are, morning and these, put them on. No, these are supposed to be crumpled trousers. Oh, they're supposed to be crumpled, yeah. are they? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you're practising to be a street tramp. Don't need practice, pal. You're already there. Get on with the quiz. Are you feeling all right Get today? Get on with the quiz. Uh, question number four. Five, sorry. No, number four. Four. St- stands, so you up see, when, oh, you're stands, up, stands up when women join the dining table. Well, yes, that always. never happens, does it? Oh, yes, it does. When was the last time do. a woman joined the dining table? You seem to remember the last time you went out with a woman, yes. right? You spent most of your time mm. signing autographs for people that were coming up to the table <laughs> and, leaving, and leaving the table to have pictures taken with them. Well, that wasn't my fault. They clapped through the window to well, get to me. So what can I'm, I do? So I'm going to say no to that one as no, well. No, so, you're not, because so, so far, the last time a woman joined the table was your daughter, Emma, and of course I stood up and pulled her seat back. When was that? Emma, um, I think it was in Mallorca. In Mallorca? Yeah, when we went to that uh, I don't remember restaurant. That. All right, I'll, 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 let, I'll where, let you have that one. Where I paid for lunch. All right. Okay? Uh, well, yeah. you offered to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, Just that reminds Those were the conditions under which you were allowed to come. No, not at all. Question number five. Mm. Uh, takes your hat off uh, when indoors and in the company of women? I don't wear a hat. OK, that's a no, then. No, it's not. It's, yeah, a, it's, it's a not appropriate. No. It's, not applicable. No. Listen, if I'm I in did, charge I of the quiz. Hang on, hang on. I'm in charge when of the I quiz. When I was a kid, and I used to have to wear a cap for school. A cap? A cap, yeah, to wear a cap, because I went to a very good school. <laughs> I okay? mean, we didn't see a picture of this. No, yeah, well, did think you look of, like Angus Young? No, think of just William. No, I'm think thinking of, of Angus Young. Think of just, I don't know who Angus Young is. You don't know think, who Angus Young no, is? No, think of just William, right. And Can my, we have an Angus Young tune, guys? I was always, always told that if a hearse or a cortege or anything passed, I had to stand on the pavement take my cap off yeah yeah that's right. of respect so the okay, answer is yes okay let's see one the yes. uh, two okay I'll give you three so three out of five question number six do you have a firm handshake very I can say you've got a firm yes. handshake I'll give you that one yeah uh, that's four uh, here's one that you will not be able to answer honestly unless you admit that it's uh, actually uh, it's a no uh, knows when to admit he's wrong of course always you've never, you've never know when to admit of course wrong. I do You've never admitted you're wrong. Of, of you course I have. Even, you can't even do it. Uh, I've listen, asked you on many t- occasions to say, do I just admit you're wrong? And you won't. I've even admitted I was wrong and then found out I was right. Well, and tell you me something me. you've been wrong about that you can admit and prove to me that you can admit you're wrong. Um, I can't think of anything à ce moment. À ce moment? Yeah. OK, that's a yeah. no then, right? So that's, it remains at four. Mm. Uh, question, uh, question number eight. Do you own a tailored suit? Yes. No, you don't. I do. No, you don't. I do. I've got six. No, where'd you get them from? I got them from shops that sell suits. That's not a tailored suit. A tailored suit is one that's made to measure. Made to measure? No. In my wardrobe no. at the moment? Currently, Just no, say no. Because I don't wear suits for work, so, okay. so no. Do you always smell nice? Of course, always. I can't in, answer that. Well, in fact, Jason Cundy said to me, last time we did a, a night show, and Jason was around mm-hmm. with um, uh, his... Um, what's, what's, what's your pal? David... Um, David Andy Goldstein. You're going to say David Gold, uh, aren't you? I was, yeah. Uh, Andy Goldstein, he mm. said, golly, mate, you always smell so nice. Seriously. Really? I don't know why he said it. Yeah, well, he has three showers a day, Jason. you sure he wasn't being uh, No, he wasn't being facetious. No, no, no. All right, so that gives you five. Yeah. Uh, question number ten, do mm. you always wear crisp white shirts? No. No, why should I? Well, that's because that's part of the thing here. Well, that's ridiculous. So you've got five out of ten. Anybody who wears crisp I'm white shirts is a bit of a flake, in my view. A flake. Yeah. 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 Well, you should wear crisp white shirts. We've better than that sort of crumpled grey stripey thing that looks like pyjamas. Yeah, it's just a working shirt. It's not. It's mm. just ridiculous. Mm. Now, just for your interest, OK? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, you're, you're only half of a classy person, basically, according oh, really? to the, your answers. Now, yeah. uh, you may know uh, some... Of, you may recognise some of these signs of a classy woman. One, wears subtle makeup. Uh, yes, I believe that uh, subtle uh, ages gracefully. Absolutely, has confidence. Yes, this is my favourite. Never drinks directly from the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've met a few women who did. But I, most of them mean, live in Newcastle. There's nothing wrong with. Uh, there's nothing wrong with. Uh, Sorry, uh, Newcastle. Uh, a woman mm. who comes to the pub mm. with you and has a bottle of beer. What's wrong with that? No, no. Yeah, well, in fact, uh, friends of mine, when they were younger women, and mm. especially in the football world, would always ask for a Bex or something yeah. and swig it from the bottle. Yeah. yeah. Accepts compliments graciously. Yes. Only wears heels she can walk in. 
Uh, well, I like women in high heels. I think they look uh, bewitching. <laughs> mm. Sid the sexist rises again. Yeah. Uh, always smells nice, which is yes. a, a, a kind of a given. Yes. Doesn't downplay her intelligence. Uh, well, well, in why, your why case, you've never been out with anybody intelligent, have you? Of course I have. Don't Rubbish. be ridiculous. Uh, uh, d- uh, number nine, reveals cleavage sparingly. Again, most of the women you've gone out with are well, not exactly in that area. Well, that's a sexist question, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not going to answer that. That's ridiculous. Well, you don't have to answer any of these. It's yeah. for women. Oh, and then the last one, wears mm. dresses tight enough to so- show she's a woman, mm. but loose enough to prove she's a lady. Really? Yeah. That's uh, rather intriguing. Anyway, so you're only half a classy guy. Well, I That's don't think so. You have not passed the test well, with I flying colours. Well, I think I've passed the test with flying colours because you only add up the numbers, whereas the audience, our audience of millions, listen to my explanations for those uh, subjects on which I had to uh, decline. Yeah. We haven't got an audience of millions here, by the way. Yeah, well, we've got hundreds of thousands, we'll have, which we'll have. I don't yeah. mind admitting to. Yeah. Uh, this is, of course, Talk Radio. Uh, we've got lots more coming up, including John McEntee uh, in the next hour. A uh, very good afternoon to you. You're listening to The Two Mics. We're on Talk Radio and we're with you for another hour. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, Ah, that's the other mic. Yes, it is. It's Mike Porky Parry here. MG is just sorting out his uh, clothing attire after trying to insult me with my clothing attire in the last part of the show. Right, we've got a bumper hour for you to conclude today's three-hour show. John McEntee, who's an old colleague of ours, an old Fleet Street colleague, will be with us from half twelve. But between now and then, we will also be investigating more mysteries of the universe. All this and much, much more here on Talk Radio with the two mics with you till one o'clock. The 21st century dream team of dialogue, debate and discourse. The two mics on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. OK, folks, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Another hour of the two mics here up to one o'clock. Got a few tweets here coming in from all over the place. A lot of you talking about the lack of sympathy that Mike Graham showed for the lady we spoke to earlier, Lisa Brinkworth, who's got one of those sort of problems in life that everybody hopes they won't encounter, and that is an inability to drive. Well, what can you say? I've got tremendous sympathy for the poor lady. She's trying to make out that she wants to drive because she wants to ferry her children around. And you, Mr Graham... What's going on? ...having just returned to the studio... Yeah, what's happening? Well, well, where have you been? I've been out for a cigarette. You've been out for a cigarette. You know, we have a show here. We have to get on with it. Yeah. You know, the world doesn't wait for you. If you're hanging around, you know, on the fire well, exit, smoking cigarettes. Well, has there been some you issue? Know. No, there's no issue. It's just that you weren't here, you know. And sometimes I wish well, you would have Well, I time it exactly right all the time. I just wish you'd you must, Something yourself. must have gone wrong. I wish you'd just apply yourself to something the Something must have gone wrong. you know what I mean? Yeah. But these things happen. Anyway, are you still going on about this woman? Well, I'm just saying that you, you were very... You were infatuated with her. Why did you not take up the obvious opportunity yes. that I gave you yes. to go and give her a driving lesson or drive her around? Well, we've got past that now. What people now are saying is he sounded rather unsympathetic. And I can reveal, people, by the way, that uh, when uh, we went off air, uh, not only was uh, Mr Graham unsympathetic, he said that he, he wondered whether, you know, there was other issues in this lady's life that had led her to now have to drive. Don't know what he's insinuating, but there he is. I'm not insinuating anything. Right, OK. You sound a bit out of breath, by the way. <laughs> not really. <laughs> We've been rushed back to the studio. No, well, the producer did come out and say, <laughs> we've had to come back early, yeah. and I don't really want Porky to have to do it on his oh, own. Oh, dear. Because I'm not sure he's capable. No, he didn't, actually. He, he did say he, that, No, yeah. he didn't, because uh, I said, oh, don't worry, I'll pick up on that and come back. The answer to the question is... How about this from Villa Rich? Yes. Now, this is a man who listens to us religiously, right, yes. every single yes. day. Yes. He says, Porky is very grouchy today. Mm? I'm not reading out what he then says because that would be not appropriate. OK, well, I can counter that because... You seem very grouchy. It's true. No, I'm not grouchy at all. You are grouchy. I've got one here from Julia and uh, there's a picture of me and Julia embracing. So she's a regular visitor to um, the Two Mike shows, which, of yeah. course, are taking place at the Edinburgh Festival this weekend. Yeah. And she says, every time I'm out with my Porky, he's very gentlemanly, although he does leave the table to pose for photos. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that, but if somebody says, you know, oh, can I have your picture taken? And you say no, then they accuse you of being unhelpful. You, and, you, uh, you remember Julia, right? Just, of course I remember Julia. In fact, I think Julia sat up drinking with you until two or three in the morning, didn't she? With her husband, last, yes. Uh, with her husband, obviously, yeah. after the uh, the last show Indeed. in rugby. Yeah. They David says, outrageous flirting by Mike Parry with that poor woman. I don't think it's outrageous at all. And that comes from David, who seems to have a face like the uh, like the like a, a pan, uh, an unused pan. <laughs> so, Why are you giving him a uh, hard time? Well, I'm giving him a hard time. He's typically oh, actually, turn, actually, turning on people. Actually, I've misinterpreted the picture. Actually, he's got no. He's he's not. A, oh, I see. He's facing his wife. Why? Why do you I, say he's got a face like a pan? Well, he's facing his he's, wife. It's and, a very beautiful picture of, of a sunset, a yeah, romantic moment, yes, that's the right. like of which you've never seen in your life. Uh, yeah, but it, right? because it's because, because you know every time any woman mm, stands mm, opposite you. You're already jumping away to sign somebody's uh, T-shirt or something. But, but because the thumbnail picture is so small, mm. I thought...
thought that the the sun what in the plank. sunset was actually his nose. What That's com- why I thought he had a, a, a funny face. Not a plank. Anyway, don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, now then, um, I've told everybody that uh, John McEntee's coming at 12.30, an old uh, Fleet Street colleague, so yeah. we're very pleased about that. Between now and then, I want to tell mm. you about a, um, a survey in one of my journals which no. revealed the relative intelligentsia of Homo sapiens right. to animals. Uh-huh. It's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Okay, why? Well, if it's uh, fascinating to you, well, it's fascinating to everybody. Yeah, how about this? Darren says, "Bring back old mm. MG." Hashtag megalomaniac plank. <laughs> well, <laughs> this has been be, the happiest moment for you. You've only been gone for thirty seconds, yeah. so I wouldn't worry about that. Mm. Now then, uh, what I'm going to say to you was: Look, uh, if there was an animal IQ, who do you think would rate at the top? Uh, an animal like me? I don't. Know, I don't understand the no, question. No, an animal IQ. Oh, if IQ. An sorry. IQ. An animal IQ. Now, yeah. uh, I would say elephants are very intelligent. Right. Uh, I would also say that uh, dogs are very intelligent. Well, and I would also say probably that uh, that certain apes are very intelligent. Well, you're absolutely right. If there was an IQ for animals, it would go like this: uh, number one, chimpanzee. Yeah. Second, gorilla. Mm. Third, orangutan. Gorilla. Yeah, four baboon, baboon, five gibbon, gibbon, six monkey. So that they're so, all. So the top six are all t- me- members of the monkey and ape family. Uh, exactly yeah. right. Uh, seven orca, orca the whale. That's a whale, yeah. right? Okay. Eight dolphin. Yes. Nine elephant. Uh huh. And you said you thought. The see, I was, see, see, not, you wouldn't, no, see, not a lot of people know that. And number ten, the pig. The pig. Yes, yeah. I've heard they're very intelligent. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So where's a dog come then? Well, hang on. I'm going, I'm going to give you this list again in a different form. An alternative study looked at the concentration of neurons mm. in the neocortex as sensory perception. Uh, sorry, in the neocortex area, which is involved in higher functions such as sensory perception, yes. generation of motor commands and spatial reasoning. Well, the reason the apes are, uh, are so uh, high up the scale, of course, yeah. is because they're a opposable thumb, aren't they? Because yes, no that's other right. creatures have got those. That's right, absolutely. Now, yeah. when it comes to these tests uh, on on spatial uh, reasoning, OK? Number one, the sperm whale. Yeah. Number two, humans. Mm. So a sperm whale yeah. has greater powers of uh, spatial reasoning right. and conscious thought Interesting. than a sperm whale. Well, I mean, there are many animals, for example, that have greater powers in different ways. I yes, mean, for example, course, a jaguar yeah. can run faster than us. Exactly. A dog can hear things that we can't hear. That's right. Uh, you know, a bat and can... smell things uh, we can't yeah, smell. Yeah, and smell things yeah, we can't smell. Right, yeah. You know, a bat can, can navigate better than us. Absolutely true. Mm. Now, number three is the killer whale. Yeah. Uh, number four, the pilot whale. Yeah. Number five, the humpback whale. So, okay. the, so the whale family, whole lot the, of whales, the dolphins. Yeah, yeah, are good at this. Mm. Number six, the orangutan. Yeah. Number seven, the chimpanzee. Now, number eight, the African elephant. Yeah. Nine, the gorilla, and ten. I wonder if you could teach um, ten, uh, the Indian a, a chimpanzee to drive a car. I'm sure you could. Yeah, I'm sure you could. Mm. I mean, in that film with um, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Uh, Every which way but loose. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he? That was an orangutan, wasn't it? Yeah, it was an orangutan, Clyde. but he, he, Clyde kind of uh, no, drove the no, car a bit, no, didn't he? I mean, the film, though. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah. But, but do you mean, remember people mm, said uh, mm. that during the filming of that movie, supposedly, yes. and though some people have denied it, mm. that Clyde was not treated perhaps as well as he well, might have been? Well, I mean, even Clint Eastwood himself had to speak out about that and said, of course, we didn't uh, impose any cruelty on the animal. But, I mean, animals, when they're trained, do have to be encouraged to do things, don't they? Uh, well, you see yeah. what I mean. Yeah, and hopefully yeah. encouraged rather than sort of, exactly. um, you know, giving a stick. Absolutely right, yeah. Mm. OK. Uh, now then, when you gave an animal a mirror... Yeah. Right, now you'll love this one because you're going to turn this Daily on me. Mirror. No, no, a, uh, a mirror to look into, yeah. OK? This is uh, the test... F- f- a, t- a test of measured intelligence mm. with regards to self-awareness. Yeah. Right? So you always accuse me of self-awareness. The... No, I accuse you of lack of self-awareness. Oh, do you? OK, right. Regards you can't accuse someone of self-awareness. OK. It's a good thing. Right, OK. Um, the experimenter discreetly marks the animal with a coloured dye. Yeah. The animal is then presented with a mirror, and their reaction is observed. Uh, a self-aware animal mm. will turn their body to get a better view yeah. of the spot of paint on its, you know, on its body. All right. It will touch the coloured spot, mm. or it will try to remove it. Using this... Ten How animal... does a dolphin do that, then? Well, hang on, hang on. Using this... Ten animals demonstrated self-awareness. Right. Right. Number one, human. Right. Number two, orangutan. Right. Number three, chimpanzee. Yeah. Four, gorilla. Five, yeah. bottlenose dolphin. How does a dolphin do that? Well, I have no idea. How does a dolphin try to touch itself or clean itself? Well, I have, I have no idea. Perhaps it rubs itself against a rock or something mm. like that, you see. Uh, number six, the elephant. <laughs> Seven, the orca again. Right. Now, eight, a bonobo. A bonobo? Yeah, what's a bonobo? A bonobo. Is that not one of those things that's a bit like a manatee? A what? Oh, actually, no, it's a monkey, I think, a bonobo. Bonobo, I yeah. think it must be a monkey. Yeah. 
nine, the rhesus macaque. That's a monkey. That's a monkey. Macaque, yeah. And ten, <laughs> for some unknown reason, this is weird, the European magpie. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. So, well, magpies it, like shiny things, don't they? Yeah, of course they so do, So maybe yeah. a mirror would be something that they would be in, in favour of. That's right. Other mm. creatures, which did not uh, appear in the survey, but are thought to have very high IQs, mm. but it's difficult to assimilate. Yeah. Giant octopuses. OK. And giant... Saw an octopus in Spain, in Mallorca. Did you? Yeah. Oh, how big well, was it? Well, actually, I didn't, but the kids did, because they were snorkelling. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, and um, my, my, my daughter's boyfriend saw it. Oh, OK. Uh, it was about... It was, it, was a, it was a sort of red in colour, oh. purplish. Yeah. And it was hiding under a rock. Oh, in the water. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Not yeah. in a shop. No, well, we no, saw no, some no. In a I, shop I, as meant, well. I meant in the shallows where it had come out of the water. Well, no? it was in a place that was about twenty feet deep. Oh, yeah, okay. Where yeah. We were snorkeling. Very nice. Yeah. Great. So giant octopuses, uh, which play with each other. Yeah. They solve problems. Yeah. And they can navigate through mazes, i.e., you know, um, combinations of uh, rocks and yeah. caves. And they I bet have... they've never been a long leap. No, I bet they have no. And they have a respectable short-term memory. Hmm. African grey parrots yeah. can mimic words and express yeah. emotion. And believe it or not, yeah. rats have remarkable... Oh, rats. Rat-like cunning. Yeah, That's where exa- it comes exactly. From. Remarkable skills to navigate yeah. um, distances. Well, well, also, they've got... I mean, a rat can probably navigate its way underground, yes. right, from yeah. uh, a Southwark station yeah. to Stanmore. Sure yeah, yeah. Sure you can probably can. work out how to do it. Sure now, how about this? Scott says this uh, yes. at the two mites. That yes. poor woman has enough problems. Don't add to them by offering parry. Well, exactly. She's been through enough. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and Betsy says, poor Carino's personal mm. recipe, rice prepared with blue spruce and scotch pine. Somehow it hasn't caught on. What? I'm not sure where she gets that from. I'm not sure either. Uh, and Jay says, Paul, yes. you can't say someone has a face like a pan. Mm. He'll be simmering now. Yeah, he will be. That's right, absolutely. A car crash radio at its finest, mm, thank you very uh, much says indeed. Stephen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and somebody who I haven't actually managed to find mm. uh, said that you uh, did very well by opening the show on your own. Here we go. Callie's Disco. Great opening to the last hour by Porky. Thank you. As old MG was a no-show. Yes, exactly. Of course he was. Mm. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried. I'm an expert on most aspects of, now, uh, coming up, of this job. Coming up, we're going to do uh, yeah. our three favourite places in Scotland mm-hmm. uh, as our listography. Yes, we right? do. yes we are, yeah. As nominated by somebody whose name I can't find at the moment. Uh, sorry, uh, shouldn't it be the, the three favourite things about Scotland, as I'm not... Oh, maybe ri- that was what he said, yeah. yeah. Three favourite things. Three favourite things about Scotland. I'm not Scotland. an expert in the uh, ge- geography of Scotland. Oh, OK. Yes. All right. Okay. We'll be doing that next right here on Talk Radio. Excellent. Talk Sport. And it's in! A diving header at the end of a 50-yard run. From the Root to the tip. Talk sport. Across the UK, online and on DAB. The two mics on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. I'm not very fond of this song. Oh, I love it. And I'm love hoping it. we won't be talking over it for long enough for it to get to the pipes bit. Yeah, I love it. I think it's a brilliant and, song. I mean, the one thing that you will think of this as is, is a sort of Scottish song, but it's really not. It's written by an Englishman yeah. uh, in, in a, a part of Scotland which is very much, you know, the sort of southwest corner, yeah. which is beautiful. Yeah. But for me, it's not really Scottish. You know what well, I mean? Have you ever seen the video of it? Have you seen yeah. the, the pipe is yes, band walking have, along yeah. the beach yeah, and all yeah, that? Yeah, it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, well, it is, but it. it's yeah. kind of, it's what I would call kind of um, plastic Scotsman. Well, you say you know? that, but it includes... Well, I'm a genuine Scotsman, being as my parents were both from Scotland. Yes, but it includes, like, terrific Scottish images, like, uh, you know, uh, Heather in the Glen and all that kind of that's what I mean. It's 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 kind of pap, isn't well, it? Well, anyway, it's like, why it's are we like, saying, it's why like are we saying it's like saying that you know, let's do some things about Great Britain, and yes. you show a picture of the Queen, yes. and then you show a picture of you know London fog, a red and it's letter all that box, kind of thing. yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. We're playing yeah. that because it's listography, mm-hmm. uh, and we've had a suggestion that we do yes. three favourite things about Scotland, right? Because of course tomorrow afternoon, right after this show, yeah. uh, we're heading to the airport and we're flying up to Edinburgh. Uh, to take part in the world's Edinburgh. biggest arts festival. 
all yeah. the Ricky, as yeah. they call it. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be uh, shooting it as a, uh, a video, which mm -hmm. we will release as a DVD later yep. on in the year. Yep. We're yep. doing three shows, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mm. 11 o'clock at night. You can still get tickets for them because there's lots and lots of seats yeah. available over those three days. Yeah. Uh, th it's about 300 a night, I think, something like that. So, like so, that? Uh, so mm. um, uh, go to the uk mm -hmm. or follow the links on Twitter and our Facebook page yes. where you can go to the Edinburgh box office as well. Yes. So would you like to kick off with the first favourite thing that you can tell me about Scotland? The uh, first favourite thing that yeah. I can tell you about Scotland is that I love haggis. Right. I love haggis. Well, I'll tell you what, if you love haggis, we're going to get you eating some. But I only ever eat it in Scotland. I yeah. wouldn't dream of going to the co-op in um, somewhere like, uh, you know, uh, Nottingham. Cheam. Uh, or Cheam or Gosport or anything yeah. and buying a haggis, although they do sell them there. Well, you said my mother used to get them from Harrods. Uh, from Harrods, yeah. yeah, OK. Yeah, well, I'd probably be a decent Mac one. McSween haggis. McSween haggis. But I, I, I It's do... great for... We have the full Scottish breakfast. Yes. We'll have to have that every day. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, that's good. Haggis, tatty scone. Yeah. You know, eggs, black bacon, pudding, black pudding. Yeah, I don't eat eggs, of course. But well, uh, all right, you don't have pudding, eggs. Yeah. How can you have breakfast without eggs? Well, I've never Weirdo. eaten an egg in my life, have I? So well, you have actually, because you eat cake. So oh, you, well, eat, you know, yeah. don't split hairs. Right, what's your uh, favourite one? My first one is Glencoe Glen in Co. the snow. Glencoe in the snow. Yeah, that's Which a place. Is, uh, Glencoe is a place. Yes. Yeah, you drive up from either Edinburgh or Glasgow. Mm -hmm. It's a sort of entrance to the Highlands. Yes, uh, and there's a pass which often has a gate that closes. Yes. when the road gets covered in snow. Yes, but if you can get up there and the road isn't covered in snow, but there's snow kind of on the peaks of the mountains. Right, it's the most incredible magical place. That sounds brilliant. It's it's it's, uh, mm. it's, it's it, they showed it when in fact in Skyfall. Mm -hmm. You know when they drive yes. up to Skyfall. Yes, when they stop mm. in the road mm. and you see that sort of vista around yeah. them before they get to the house. Mm. That's Glencoe. Right, OK. And it's been in Harry Potter. I mean, it's a beautiful yeah. part of the world. Magical. Uh, it sounds brilliant. Fantastic. I want to qualify my first one, because I didn't say it properly. Right. I meant uh, haggis at the ubiquitous chip in Glasgow. Oh, OK. That's what I meant. I'm not sure if we'll make to the ubiquitous no, chip, because, that's where, because that's we'll where, be in Edinburgh. That's where I ate it. You see it? I mean? It's okay. very Scottish, with all the stuff uh, hanging from the ceiling and all that, that kind of stuff. That was the place where uh, Donald and I went for, I think it was... Uh, I think it was his birthday. Yes. No, it was my birthday. Right, OK. Uh, and myself uh, and my partner, he yeah. and his partner, yeah. and uh, the former editor of Daily Mail and his partner went. Oh, yes. And uh, it was... Who's that, I was Chris? Still, uh, yeah, I'm not giving his name away. Well, if I Chris? say that, it's because I don't want his name out well, there. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's only a Christian name. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And um, But everybody knows who he is now. Well, his name's Chris. There's anyway. millions of Chris's in the world. Anyway, yeah. we were sitting there, and I was still working for the Mirror in those mm -hmm. days, and so my phone was constantly going. Yes. You know? And well, um, people saying you're sacked. Uh, no, it wasn't people saying I was yeah, sacked. No, no. Yeah, okay. no, people saying, you know, what do you want to do about this? Yes, you know, we want yeah. to change this page, that yeah, page. You know, I was yeah. constantly being asked to make decisions yes. all the time, even yes. when I was out for dinner. So you employed a load of half bakes who couldn't no, make didn't. decisions themselves. No, but you? they were all frightened of doing something without telling me. No, I see. You know, especially if it had something to do with the front page. Yes. yes. And so this was at that sort of time of night, mm. and we went there, and um, I said uh, to Donald, um, "Why don't you choose the wine?" Mm. And then my phone went, mm. um, and I went outside. And um, as uh, I came in, the mm. sommelier approached me and said, I'm terribly sorry, sir, mm. uh, but the wine that your uh, friend has chosen is not available. Mm -hmm. And I went, which one was it? And he showed me. It was 500 quid. A bottle? Yeah. My God. And I said, well, I'm very, very grateful for your very yeah. quick thinking on yeah. this one. I said, yeah. can you make sure that he mm. doesn't pick one quite as expensive as yeah. that? Because yeah. I'm paying. Oh, you were paying, you know? were you? My so, God. Uh, so in the end, we settled for one that was about 150. Right. All right, my second favourite one, talking yeah. of Donald, is yeah. the garage. Uh, in Glasgow okay. at three o'clock in the morning. Yes, okay. which of course is Donald's nightclub. Yes, uh, where you've been, where we performed yeah. last year. Where yeah. We'll do another show. Okay, uh, in fact, in December this yes. year, I think. Uh, what a fantastic nightclub it is! It certainly it's, is. But uh, isn't that a bit obvious? You know, your mate's nightclub. I mean, why? You know, well, it's one of my <laughs> favourite things Scotland. about going to Scotland. Okay. All right, okay. You know, right. I will, I will uh, probably yes. visit there. Yes, I would say mm -hmm. at least one of the nights we're in Edinburgh. Right, okay. Because we'll finish the show. Yeah, uh, we'll have a quick sort of uh, session of pictures and all that. Yes, and I would, I would be very surprised. If one of the nights we don't jump in the car okay. and head west, right? Okay, very and come good. back at about six. Very good. Okay. All right. So second one for you. My second one. Okay, and it is historic, but it's uh, very relevant to my life. Mm. The Bay City Rollers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another Donald reference. He's putting their show on. Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah okay. Well, there you go. But I mean the. Impact they had. I mm. mean, I was never a Bay City Rollers teeny no. weeny fan. Well, there was a name for it, wasn't there? Uh, it was uh, a roller something. Yeah, the Rollerites or something. I don't yeah, know it wasn't the Rollerites, yeah, but, but it was. But, um, I thought you, since you were a fan, you might have well, known it. No, well, I wasn't a fan. What I was, I was an observer. Yeah. In the early years of my newspaper career, I was about twenty-one, I think. Or... Well, around about the time you were impersonating Noel Edmonds' brother. <laughs> you were around about the same yeah. time, yeah. But I was working up in Newcastle ah. for some of that time yeah. at the training centre, so to speak. And the they didn't and, train you very well, did they? Uh, they trained me brilliantly. I 
I've had a brilliant career. And the Rollers came to town. They mm. came to Newcastle. Mm. And it was, I'm not joking, it was a riot. Was it riot. the Rollerettes? No, no, no. But, and, and, yeah, but it was a riot. Yeah. But the, the thing was, they traded on how, on their Scottishness. Yeah. They had these sort of white suits with tartan all up and down the yeah. sleeves and the legs and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, it was kind of trim, wasn't it? it? it tartan was trim, trim. Yeah, tartan trim and all that kind of stuff. And then, years later, mm. when I got back, you know, I was in Scotland or something, I... It's, to my astonishment, I found that they were still highly respected as part. Well, they're doing a comeback tour now. That, that's right, as part of the culture yeah. of Scotland. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, my yeah. final one. Yes. Uh, you might say is a bit obvious as well. Mm. Whiskey. Whiskey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not. Not just drinker, because. Actually. Not just because. Well, we might get you tasting some of it. Not just yeah, because yeah. Uh, mm. it's something that I like. Because I don't drink a lot of whiskey. No. Um, but I do like a, a dram once in a while. Yeah. And the great thing about the culture of whiskey in Scotland is yeah. they take it very seriously. Yes. You know, there's all sorts of different um, mm-hmm. areas where they have yes. some are more peaty than others. Yeah. Some are more blended than others. Mm-hmm. But the malt whiskey business in Scotland is fascinating. And some of the stuff that they're producing is brilliant. Yes. And when, when you see where the pubs that we go to, yeah. the reverence with which it's treated. Reverence. Yeah, yeah. you must be reverent about the whiskey. OK. It's brilliant. OK, great. Well, my third one for yeah. Scotland is the architecture of Aberdeen. Uh-huh. Because it's the all, granite city. Yeah, exactly. It's all built from granite. Yeah. And and Aberdeen on a cold day, uh, but a bright, you know, sort of blue, sunshiny day. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. I think Aberdeen is a, a fantastic bright, city. sunshiny day. Yeah. Isn't that a lyric? Uh, I can see clearly day. now. Yeah, no, well, right, you're yeah. now talking, actually, in song. No, well, because a cold day, but a bright blue sky. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bright, yeah. bright. There's not a lot of that in Aberdeen. Uh, well, there is actually sometimes. I've seen days. Well, of like course, that. there is sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So, so Aberdeen is right. uh, is. Um, so Aberdeen is your third one. Indeed. Okay. How many times well, have you been there? Well, the architecture of Aberdeen. The architecture of Aberdeen. Yeah. 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 Where did you stay when you were up there? I didn't stay. I just went for a day trip. One. You went for a day trip yeah. to Aberdeen. I did. Yes. From London. No, 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 no. From um, Edinburgh. From Edinburgh. From Edinburgh. What were you doing in Edinburgh? I don't know, but it was when I worked for Thompson Regional Are you newspapers. Sure about this? Yeah, I'm absolutely sure. Are you sure you'd have made this up? No, I went to the Press and Journal. All right. I went to the Press and Journal okay. in Aberdeen, believe right. me. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't believe you. No, but but I, there we are. I, I don't Nothing new there. Me or not. Now, no. coming up next, mm. um, what can only be described as a titan of the gossip business. Indeed. Uh, Mr. John McEntee, yep. formerly of the Daily Express when we mm. were there, uh, now of the Daily Mail. Mm. Uh, he's got a new book out, which is called I'm Not One to Gossip But. Yep. And uh, we'll be talking to him about what's in it and much else besides coming up next. This is Talk Radio. We are the two Mikes. I'm Mike Graham. He's Mike Parry. And we are joined, I'm delighted to say, with almost uh, exquisite timing yes. uh, by Mr John McEntee, who I can only are. assume uh, has uh, only recently left the bar. Very good afternoon uh, to you, John. Good to see you. And you pronounce my name brilliantly. Nobody Ooh. can... Uh, they call me McGintree, McGuntee. Well, no, I'd like to think... No, I mean, no, no, no. I mean, it's here. Hey, look, it's hey, on the book. Well, Mac- given, I mean, also, given the fact that, that we used to spend quite a bit of time together mm. many years ago... Yeah, of I course. Mean, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. When I saw on Facebook, uh, as we all now do... Uh, yeah. that this book was coming out. We thought, well, we must get uh, John yeah, And, uh, yeah. and uh, Mike, of course, was... Uh, maybe, I don't know if you guys... you remember on the Sunday Express when, when you were at the Daily yeah, Express? Yeah, yeah, well, we're always around well, in the same place. We're always class, around really. the same building and yeah. uh, falling... I mean, I was just reading the, the sort of the entree to your book and your experience with Carolina Hearn falling into the yeah, last yeah. table at the Groucho Club. And it reminded me of how so much of what we did mm. was involved in drink. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean the practically all of it. changed. Yeah. Mm. And, it, and I don't think journalism is any better for... for no, it isn't. You know, well, for, they're all certainly the sales aren't any better, are they? No. Well, you see, all the papers now have terracotta armies of people sitting on, on online, yes. sitting there with their Tupperware boxes right. like yes. the subs used to. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And nobody goes Great out cardigans. Anymore. And the whole point of going out in the days when yeah. you did mm. was that you actually did meet people and you and did you get people. stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah indeed. Oh, yeah. I mean, you remember going up to... Um, you know the sort of the, the, the mirror building and going to stab in the back yeah, in there, yeah. and, uh, or going around to that dreadful club that was full of vagabonds, uh, vagabonds, yeah, full yeah, of police yeah. officers from Snow Hill. That's right, Frank yeah. Thorne uh, and, and various <laughs> Frank uh, Thorne appears. Ne'er do well, ladies of the night. Frank and Thorne, you, who I get thought stories had died by the way, appeared in a headline on the front of the Evening Standard yeah. yesterday because that terrible story about the young yeah. girl who got no Frank. No, Frank has undergone. I think he's. I think he's by medical order off the drink. Well, and he's lost about you know three stone and looks great. He probably has. Go on, John. I've got to say to you that in those days when the pubs used to close at three, do you know, yeah. in, uh, uh, in Fleet Street, they mm. opened again at five. Yeah. And everyone used to go off to places like Vagabonds, yeah. Yeah. which never had any clocks. Or the right. City Golf Club. Uh, City Golf Club, but no clocks yeah. and no windows. No, that's right. And what, what Mullally, the ex-policeman, who um, <laughs> he claimed that he'd left Scotland Yard because he had a heart attack, yeah. and his brother told me, no, he had a heart attack after they caught him fiddling. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, right. but he, he used still to give us good, all cocktail sausages at six. Yeah, he was going. Still a decent pension. But also the idea that in those days 
nobody noticed that you weren't in the office ever. Well, no, no hang, on, hang on. It, it was better than that. When, when I first arrived in London at the Daily Express, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, don't seem to have as many reports as I thought they'd have. And then it was explained to me, no, 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 they've got twice as many reports as they need. <laughs> but the news editor comes out every morning and says, right, when he has a walkthrough, I want him to think that all our reports are out doing stories. So you lot over there, there were six of them at the end, mm. get out to the pub right away. So you were ordered into the pub yeah. to make the editor think that we were all yeah. out getting stories. Yeah. But an old friend of ours, Chris Williams, yes. who, who, Chris, who, uh, yeah. Chris was on the Express, but Chris was then, uh, he was then, uh, his last job was he was the... Uh, well, funny uh, enough, we were just talking about him because yeah. I, had, I had dinner with him on my birthday because he yeah. ended up in Scotland when I was yeah. there, he was editing editor the Daily Mail. He was editor yeah. of the Scottish Daily Mail. Like, yeah. He told me a great story about there was one particular reporter who, mm. who always left his coat in the back of the chair. That's right, yeah. Yeah. And that down he went to the pub. Mm. Anyway, the guy came back after an hour and Chris says, where have you been? Mm. And he said, the library. And he said, is it snowing in the library? His <laughs> head was covered in snow. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. But Chris, of course, <laughs> yeah. Chris, of course, was not any stranger to those kind of things. He was the opposite and never Ooh. took his jacket off. No. So that when he walked around the office, yeah. he always yeah. wore his jacket. Well, Chris so, wasn't also so then it didn't look as if he'd just been out. And, and no. Chris always tried to improve relationships between the boss Bosses and uh, and members of his staff, yes. particularly if they were female. That's very harsh. <laughs> yeah, he's not, good at that. He's not, good at it. Well, not entirely untrue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. but, uh, yeah. but, but there we are. So tell us a bit more about the book. I mean, we've mm. all got a book in us, we yeah, all think. Yeah. Mm. But it's quite difficult to actually do. I mean, Porky's mm. written a couple of books about yeah. you know what he claims are best sellers. One of them is now available for a penny. Uh, <laughs> on a on uh, No, <laughs> on Amazon. <laughs> Pennyland. That's Wayne, that's that's a a bit Wayne Rooney. You can buy a hundred of them for Christmas for a pound. Oh, that's cruel. That's a low blow. But anyway, John, sorry. What decided you to, to actually do no, it. No, Where did you find the time? I, I, no, I wanted to do. A, I wanted to do a sort of. A, uh, I used to tell my kids stories about. A, I had a very bizarre childhood in in, in Ireland, mm-hmm. and, and I wanted to. T- I used to tell them strange stories about my granny and the rest of it. I thought I'd write them down, and then I thought, well, actually, uh, Fleet Street and uh, my time at Fleet Street, mm. even up to the time of Eve yeah. Pollard and, and uh, Rosie Bicket, w- yeah. was bizarre as well. You know, yes. Charles Golding. Yeah. So I, I, it evolved from that. I used to get up in the morning, I, 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 a bit like Maeve Binchy, an old friend of mine. Maeve was the London correspondent of the Irish Times and may have liked to drink she was mm. always in somewhere in Fleet Street yeah. about noon and suddenly she had produced this book called Light a Penny Candle which mm. became a bestseller right. and I said how would you do it oh I used to get up at 6 in the morning and I used to write it before the, the mm. opening time <laughs> basically yeah. and yeah. Uh, in a sense yeah. in a sense that's mm. where it evolved right. and uh, it was a, um, a colleague of, an old colleague of mine James O'Brien who was mate with Ian Dale who's publishes he's the boss oh, yeah. Bite Back yeah. there's no money in it but basically but he said he'd have a read of it right. Mm. And um, that, that's where it evolved from. Oh, yeah. And it's it basically it's 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 about journalism, but it's also it, it, it evokes an era that's gone. I mean, mm. for example, a great friend of mine was Keith Waterhouse. Yes, and one of the stories in the book was that Keith was uh, had a play opening in down in Bath right. and uh, uh, called "Hear My Song," mm. and I was arranging a a trip down with some of the lads to see the play mm. uh, and um, Peter Bowles was starring in it and I said to, to, to Keith um, how long does it take to get to Bath and he said a bottle and a half of Chardonnay <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean that was the way yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. everything was measured that way yeah. that, that's yeah. right I mean the thing is John it's great just to see you in this studio today because of course you were a gossip columnist you used to go to the Christmas gossip columnist lunch and of course if there was one tomorrow there would be no Ross Benson no there'd Dempster. be no Peter Torrey there'd be no Dempster no. so I mean you have outlived some of the legendary names well, I was a bit younger, you know, even though mm-hmm. I'm an old fart mm-hmm. now, but I was yeah. I was a bit younger. Yeah. And, of course, Dempster, who who is the legend, I mean, Dempster did create the modern gossip yeah. column. Yes. And Dempster and I were great friends until uh, he foolishly put... I was then working as William Hickey on The Express, mm. and he put a piece in his column about his dog dying. Yeah. Uh, he had a, he had a, pe- a Pekingese called mm. Tulip. Oh, yeah. And he put a photograph in his... Co- you wouldn't do it now, but a photograph mm. of the dead dog. Mm. Well, not dead, but the yeah. dog who died <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. in his column. Oh, I can see and, the and it was Chris walking. Williams. Yeah. Very cleverly said to me, "Why did you write a little piece? Um, you know, to, uh, take, mm. take the pee out of him mm. by, by So I wrote this uh, piece in the William Hickey column, yeah. saying, "The diary is in mourning. My pet ferret Nigel has passed away after right. twenty-five years. Mm. Uh, I miss his little nose peeping out of his bespoke cage." Right. And Dempster, who was a friend of mine, rang the following day, mm. and the, uh, the girl accused said, you of a betrayal. No, no, I thought he was going to say very droll. Mm. He said, "You Irish sea, mm. don't interrupt me, you Irish turd. Mm. Uh, mm. How mm. dare you? My mm. dog isn't even buried. Right. How mm. dare you?" Mm. And he said, "I'm writing." to Lord Hollick and writing to Rosie Bicott no. and mm. we never spoke again uh, because he was That's so amazing. upset on, on the, the death of his dog yeah. or being mocked. But there was yeah. a lot of that, wasn't there? The kind of you yeah. know, little in-jokes about 
yeah, each other yeah. and there was a friendly mm. rivalry but occasionally quite vicious stuff. Yeah. Well you see Ross used to Ross Benson who was my mm. predecessor Ross and, and Dempster had this huge rivalry which because right. which, uh, Ross, uh, Ross and his wife Ingrid who wrote Royal Books lived mm. in a nice house in Pimlico and the, 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 which they Ross ma- didn't play for by no, the way. no but no. they marketed it mm. as a house with royal connections because yeah. they were both write, writing Royal Books yeah, exactly. and Dempster wrote a little paragraph uh, saying um, you know that uh, anybody who buys this house has to be warned that it's affected mm. by the fumes from Victoria Coach Station. <laughs> and Ross, exactly, Ross yeah. wrote to, to the yeah. late Lord Rothermere yeah, yeah. and complaining about how dare this man Good insult the, his family. And what did um, uh, a, a wonderful aristocratic answer back, you know, mm. typed, mm. but on the top from Lord Rothermere, Benson! Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Treating him like a servant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh. it's, it's, it sounds, I mean, terribly romantic. When people love it. We did, we did a stage show up in Edinburgh. People love the old Fleet Street stories. Yeah, because, you know, yeah. They were characters there which have no longer, they've been wiped from the face well, of the map. It was an industry. I mean, I'm amazed that, yeah. uh, I mean, obviously, the Daily so Mail is one of the places where, where they still take their journalism relatively seriously. Mm. They I mean, take it seriously, but they don't, nobody gets out. And also, the salaries very, are diminished. Yeah, and then you know, salaries are diminished. But you're on the Ephraim Hardcastle yeah, column now, yeah, which, which yeah. originally was Peter Mackay. Is he still not around? No, no, Peter is still hanging in there. Right. You know, mm. and he's, he's one of the great survivors. No, Peter, Peter has been everywhere. I mean, mm. he was, he was, he was William Hickey. He was, uh, but I mean, Peter was reminding me when he was on the Express. Uh, he came down from Edinburgh in the sixties that he, it was normal to take people to the Savoy Grill, mm. and your expenses were huge. Yeah. Yes. Now, and, and also a very interesting th- thing on diaries, for example. Mm. Uh, uh, the, the Hardcastle column pays eighty pounds an item. That was exactly the same in nineteen ninety seven. Yeah. Right, the yeah. diaries Dempster used to pay three hundred pounds for a lead story. Right, right. Uh, Sebastian Shakespeare, who does it now, pays the same. Right, now you yeah. could buy an awful lot more when Dempster was in his prime yeah, course, in the seventies yeah. for three hundred quid. Absolutely. Yeah. So the whole sort of plimsa line of journalism yeah. has dropped. Yeah, and has it also been affected by the kind of Leveson effect, as, as it were? Where I mean, much of your stuff is more frivolous in a sense. Yeah, but, I, mean, yeah. I know that I've spoken to to some of the Sunday journalists I used to know yeah. who say that you know even if you think about writing a particular story now you know the first person that's in touch with you is a lawyer so mm. where'd you get it from mm. you know we need to know your source you know because if you've got this in yeah, any way yeah. by nefarious mm. means mm. we're going to shut it down and it's well, a lot more difficult but you see in our day you you were worried about libel when you guys were knocking around as well, the, the big worry was libel yeah. now it's privacy yeah. yeah. and you have this very bizarre thing where, where celebrities will cite privacy as a reason for um, you know suing you or threatening mm. to yeah. sue you yeah. and at the same time they're pulling out Instagram pictures of their kids on a oh, beach well, in Bahamas. This is the amazing and it's a complete, thing. complete and utter the, travesty. The gossip columnist has almost been wiped out by yeah. social networking. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, for instance, in the in the old days, you know, the old Pippa Ring and all this kind of stuff, quarter million quid, that would have been an exclusive for somebody somewhere. That yeah. doesn't happen anymore because yeah. she's got her what? own page anyway. Yeah. You know, the Pippa Ring, the 250,000 oh, no, yeah. ring. Okay. But, yeah. but also, the, in, in, in a sense, in the last 20 or 30 years, uh, diaries have moved out of... Uh, and the entire newspapers are mm. diaries. Mm. Now, right. you know, it used to be celebrities mm. in, in, the, in the early days. It was knobs and you know the yep. uh, the, the lifestyles of, of the, uh, of the uh, yeah, yeah. and then now it's reality TV. Are there stars. any sort of? I mean, is the aristocracy what it was as well? I mean, the Tara, well, they are. I, I mean, mean Tara Palmer Tompkins and Steve. Yeah, the Duke. Of, uh, I mean, the people have been interesting, like the Duke of Westminster or mm. the Duke of Norfolk and his wife getting back together yeah. again. But mm. I remember when when um, uh, the um, uh, uh, Debo, the, the Duchess of Devonshire, her husband Andrew, who's now dead. Mm. When Andrew, um, he started the Polite Society, and we used to in the Evening Standard, we used to ring him up, and because he was too polite, he always took calls from us, mm. and he was furious. The butler would say, "Who is? Oh, it's the Evening Standard," mm. and he'd come along, "Please, please stop calling me," mm. but because right. he had founded the Polite Society, right. he had to talk. He could do it. I mean, even like the Marquis of Blandford's cleaned up his act. He, he is, used to, yeah. He's he used to clean. get stoned off his face and ring me, mm. you yeah. know, to <laughs> yeah. say, you know, I'm yeah. doing this and the other. Yeah. Great. Well, we have great fun with him on the Sunday yeah. Sunday Express. I mean, you're right, but there are still. I mean, the aristocracy is still interesting, mm-hmm. and a lot of the, the, the new generation, the Tatler sort of people yeah. who buy Tatler, right. uh, and they do populate the, 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 the diaries but there are very very few diaries left I mean yeah. the mail is a diary the, uh, the Express really hasn't got a diary no. yeah. um, the Express hasn't got much really yeah. no. not <laughs> no, for a proprietor no, no, that sucks all the money out well the new but, Duke of Westminster is going to be fascinating isn't he he's only 20, 25, 25 he's yeah. a billionaire yeah. he's not married yeah. I mean blimey there'll be a queue of women from all over yeah. the world won't they heading for the, yeah. the Eaton Estate in Cheshire and the problem is with, with say like some of the, the royals I mean, William is the most boring person on the planet he's just not interested <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. you know 
he yeah. had uh, he had uh, Stan all holidays yesterday for lunch, but mm. you know I'm sure there was mm. nothing of any interest said. <laughs> well, Whereas Harry is he reasonably his mother. interesting. He missed his mother every day. Well, know. I mean, in fairness, that was quite poignant. But mm. the thing is that he, he, you haven't got like Harry is quite interesting. Mm. And but ever since the, the naked Vegas thing, he's been quite careful, hasn't he? Yeah, or, or dressing. Yeah, but up he's still as an unmarried, actor. isn't he? And he's still one yeah. of the most eligible men yeah, in the world. Yeah, but I think he's but I think he's being a little less kind of well, you know, shall we say? And he's just grown up and he's been a bit more responsible. I think he's just got better security yeah. people around him. Maybe, yeah. And you see, we used to have great fun with what's her name. Uh, she's now got a bit old for it. The, uh, the uh, what's her name? The, her father was a Nazi. The, oh, the, Princess um, Michael. Princess Michael. Yeah, oh, yeah. And yeah. I remember um, uh, Jilly Cooper, who's a friend of mine. Jilly did a big interview with her for. Um, for the male she was always ready to come out with something and dark. And then uh, she? Uh, she, she, be, she felt betrayed because um, Gilly had said she was plagiarising her books mm. and she sent Gilly 30 pieces of silver. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And I remember going to yeah. a party where Gilly was hiding behind a pillar because mm. uh, Princess yeah. Michael was there. You don't get all that I once now. followed a guy from uh, all the way from uh, who, who had been seeing her for the weekend. He was a member of the Hunt. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that story? Yeah. And I, and I had to get on a plane with him from, uh, from New York to Dallas. Yeah. Uh, and basically stay in Dallas for a month to try and convince him to talk to me. Which he never did. Well, the <laughs> prince, I, was, I had a great time. I was in Dallas for a month at his great hotel, and all, my only job was to ring him up every day and, and say, to be told yeah, to, talk yeah. to, to be told no, I'm not ready to talk. I to you. went to Mallorca with Tommy Smith, our photographer, right? Yeah, yeah. Because another report of another fair she was having, whilst Prince Michael of Kent was at their estate in Mallorca, and I actually smashed down the fence and went through because he <laughs> wouldn't answer the door, yeah, yeah. and ran down the swimming pool, and he ran off. <laughs> he ran into the house, yeah. and then rang the Daily Express and reported me for invading his privacy. Yeah. I think that was the yeah. first ever a case. Yeah. But yeah. you see, with, with celebrities for example, nowadays you go to um, you can't get access to them. No. Uh, because it's all run by it, PR. And it's all, it? there's VIP areas and VVIP areas. Right. Mm. And I remember when I first uh, worked on the Standard going to, there was a play called Art that opened and mm. it was owned by Sean Connery's wife, uh, Michaela or Michelle mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm. And um, Connery's famous for being very, very tight. Mm. And uh, it was, it starred Tom Courtney and, um, uh, Albert Finney, yeah. the two great actors. There was another actor in it um, mm. who uh, li- name eludes me. But anyway, the party was in the, in the, the mall gallery, right. mm. and I turned up at the party. And normally, uh, you know, a, a first night party, it's champagne if it's a rubbish play. Mm. It's wine if it's a really good play. Well, anyway, Connery had a pay bar, right. mm. and I'd never been to a pay bar before mm. at, a, at a first night. Right, and right. Albert Finney had taken his two sisters down from Leeds, mm. and they were there in the corner, and I introduced myself, and he said, you won't believe it, I've had to pay for the effing drinks for mm. my sisters. Mm. And anyway, Connery was standing at the door with these two enormous bodyguards, one each side of him, mm. and I'm six foot two. Mm. And I went up, introduced myself to mm. Sean, and I said, a great play, and he never said anything. Mm. And uh, I said to him, um, I, I'll just speak to Albert Finney, and he's a bit annoyed as a pay bar he had to pay for the drinks for his mm, sisters mm. and he went Ugh. and I suddenly found myself lifted under the oxters mm. and Connery got smaller and smaller and mm. smaller and as I was out. thrown out onto the, onto the right. mall uh, but the fact is you wouldn't get access to no. that sort of stuff. you wouldn't now. get that close you know, you? no, no. diaris gets near them no, you know, no. Uh, because they're they're, they're, um, they're in their own little they're world they're in their own little world yeah, yeah. yeah. they're all so massively, massively protected stay with yeah. us John we've got more to talk about it's John McEntee's here his book is called I'm Not One to Gossip a Butt will make me co back to some of those halcyon days with Rosie Boycott running the Express. Halcyon? Uh, yeah. Oh, halcyon. <laughs> I use the word advisedly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Talk radio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Across the UK, online and on DAB. The two mics on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. Talk Radio, we are of the two mics. Uh, we are in the company of John McEntee, whose book, I'm Not One to Gossip, but uh, is sitting in front of me. It says, Wicked Whispers, William Hickey, of 40 Years of Blarney, which yeah. is not a bad way to make a living, really, when <laughs> yeah, you think bad. about it. No. I mean, uh, my kids are all saying to me, you know, uh, what are you complaining about? You're working right. so hard. You work three hours a day, and you know, which is a little harsh because they don't understand well, the that's immense right. amount that's of, right. you know, research that goes into this programme. Exactly. The great thing is, though, John, although none of us ever work in Fleet Street anymore, yeah. our industry is called Fleet Street. It's retained it's village, that, yeah. that, that, that genre. Now, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, I was asked to go over to Fleet Street because the Dundee Courier moved out Ooh. and they were the last one to leave, right? Yeah. So the BBC did a bit of a days in Fleet Street. Yeah. So it was a local BBC, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, it was uh, local BBC. No, it wasn't. It was BBC. 
BBC no, it was South East. Well, yeah. whatever. It's I, local I, I, BBC. I, I, I don't See, care. the thing about Porky here is he's trying yeah. to big himself up no, it, just because you're here. Well, it was BBC, and I don't really <laughs> care which BBC. BBC. Well, I'm, 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 I interviewed him for about 20 minutes. Take the hand off his talk. Use about, anyway, anyway, about three yeah. minutes. Anyway, the thing is, John, that they all they wanted to know was about the drinking culture. And I said to them, I was standing next to the Express building, I said, but no, you've got to remember that this was the building where they sent ten reporters to find the bank robber, Ronald Biggs, the train robber, Ronald Biggs. Yeah. I said, this is the building from where they sent my colleague Bob McGowan to cover the Falklands War. Yeah, that yeah. was all cut out. Yeah, that was all yeah. cut out. All they wanted to know was, did you drink all day in this place yeah, over yeah, here? And yeah. Elvino's, did you drink all day in there? Yeah, That's all yeah. I mean, Elvino's was a good And of course, uh, you mentioned uh, the, the Ronnie Biggs and the great Brian Vine, who was on the Express. Yes. And Vine was part of it, crucial to the finding mm. of, of He Biggs. was, yeah. yeah. But uh, the great story about Vine, he was you know, on his, his daily perambulation up mm. Fleet Street to... Um, to Elvino, yeah. and he was stopped by a bloke, and he said, "Don't, mm. I can't speak now. I'm in a taxi." Because right. he was claiming it. <laughs> <laughs> he was walking. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, well, he the was the guy. That, he was the guy who was recalled from New York uh, by the Daily Express by and, Larry Lamb. Uh, by Larry Lamb, because mm. he rather foolishly gave an interview to the New York magazine. That's right. Because they were doing Anthony a sort of, Hayden guest. Um, it was Anthony yeah, Hayden yeah. guest. They did an interview uh, about sort of Great <laughs> Brits in New York. And he was the one that, yeah, that yeah. they picked to put That's sort of right, on the yeah, cover. Yeah. And there was a picture of him standing uh, mm. in his lavish sort of Upper West Side apartment, mm. mantelpiece, yeah, you know, yeah, sort of yeah, a picture yeah. of the family. The monocle. Uh, and he talked about how he had a house on Fire Island, yeah. just bought a yacht. A string of horses. A string yeah. of horses. The editor read it and goes, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. This guy's <laughs> making more money than me. It was Lord Matthews read it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. And, and apparently he got, a, he got he bought his racehorse on yeah. the QE2, and it was designated as a family pet. Yeah, and he eventually ended up as the managing editor of the... Uh, of the Daily Mail, That's right, yeah. and uh, and he was then sort of in hiding most of the time mm. because yeah. of course Dacre used to be his junior yeah. in yeah, New York. Yeah. He used to send him out to get the dry cleaning. So yeah. I mean, all of these stories are amazing. But let's talk about Rosie Boycott because she was the most unlikely editor Strange. of a tabloid yeah. newspaper. In fact, when you mentioned Anthony Hayden Guest, yes. uh, it reminds me of a great Rosie story mm. because yeah. Rosie um, fired. James Hughes Onslow. Do you remember James yes, Hughes Onslow? Yes, I do, yeah. James Hughes Onslow was doing Beachcomber and mm. he's, he's a very unlikely sort of character. Hughes yeah, he was Onslow. an old Etonian, wasn't old he? Old Etonian. Mm. Anyway, uh, James Steen, who was then editing Punch, uh, sent... Um, he he's sent a very James, young guy, wasn't he? Who? James Steen, very yeah, young. Yeah, James, but yeah. James sent... Um, very mischievously, he sent uh, uh, Hughes Onslow yeah. to Rosie's house in Westbourne Grove. Which yeah, because was, she was selling it. Yeah. She was selling it. And he excused himself and went to the loo. And, of course, what he did was he, un- he took, her, took off the, b- the bat panel and put yeah. some fish fingers behind the bat panel. I thought it was kippers. No, it was fish fingers. Fish fingers. Fish fingers. Yeah. And, of course, the house yeah. stank to high heaven. Mm. Yes. And, uh, they had to rip up the floorboards. Yeah, and it? eventually they had down a rod that everybody in and mm. they couldn't find it. After three months, they found the fish fingers. Mm. And the way she caught him out, she got her secretary to ring oh, all did the she people finally find out that it was him. But he had used his wife's maiden name, uh-huh. mm. but his own phone number, and the secretary rang and they said, James, who's on through here? Mm. Right. And mm. they had her, and she wanted to do it for criminal trespass. Yeah. Right. But she was persuaded by Chris Blackhurst, her deputy, not to bother. Yeah. Right. But the funny thing about Hughes Onslow, and this is where a hidden guest comes in, Hughes Onslow has a bit of a history because he used to be a very young reporter at Evening Standard mm. when the first Notting Hill Carnival took place. Right. Right. And the Notting Hill Carnival, it was, it was the first carnival with a riot and, yes. and he was sheltering in a doorway hmm. and who opens the door but um, Rosie Boyd uh, no no not Rosie Jermaine Greer oh, okay. who was well, in Jermaine a crime King. right? and Jermaine Greer opened the door and oh. James wasn't seen for three months they had this very tempestuous oh affair. yes, really? yes. Uh, anyway yeah. um, so cut to when he's doing uh, he's doing uh, the um, beach beach coma and Fiona Dove, who's a very nice PR, who's now up in... You She's might in Edinburgh, Edinburgh, I know Fiona. Yeah. Yeah. She used to be married to um, uh, Thompson, the chap who did uh, Have I Got News For You. But anyway, mm. she invited me to a screening uh, or a recording of Room 101 with, with Jermaine and Greer. Mm. And it was down at the South Bank, near where the Express Building mm. uh, yeah. uh, is. Down the road from be. here, yeah. So yeah. anyway... The, the thing was recorded. There was myself, um, Fiona, a producer, no, nobody else. And we're having a glass of wine with Jermaine. Mm. And I said, oh, by the way, I work with an old friend of yours. Think, and she go, who? Mm. Um, so she, and I mentioned James's name. She put her hands on my shoulders mm. and stared at me. And I said, mm. do you know James had the biggest, excuse me, yeah. of any mm. man that I'd ever slept yeah. with? Good God. Well, uh, he was known uh, as James yeah. Hughes' big boy. In yeah, the office, <laughs> he was. And uh, yeah, we yeah. were very, very impressed. But then, mm. cut to more recently, I was mm. at an oldie lunch and mm. uh, I was sitting Do they with, still have those? Because the oldie's do, gone, yeah, look, No, the oldie's still going strong. Oh, where do they uh, take place? Uh, Pat, where in, they take? in Simpsons in the Strand. Mm. Oh, okay. So uh, mm. um, I'm sitting with Rosie and James Hughes Arnold had another table mm. and I say, oh, you see, I see James over there, you know, the fish finger incident. Mm. Do you ever, mm. ever speak to him? She said, that 
you know, yeah. and oh, she was furious. Yeah. Said, no, no, I can't stand them. Right. And he, you know, he disgraced me. Blah blah blah. Anyway, I told her the Jermaine Greer story, mm. and when I came to the punchline, I thought she could, you know, he'd laugh or something. Mm. She said, "Not as big as Anthony Hayden guess." <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, dear. there um, we are. We were trying to remember, John, uh, the club in Soho where we often used to bump into you. Jerry's. In the company Jerry's, of, uh, that's Amanda right, yeah. Platel. Oh, God, And yeah. sadly, our, our long-lost uh, colleague um, with her, you know, eye patch, who was... Murray Colvin. Murray Colvin. Oh, yeah. No, because yeah. uh, Jerry's is one of the... It's still sort of... It's still a kind of show of the last and, bastion and hacks of, yeah. It's still and going. The only problem is, it with, with as a gossip column, is that um, Michael, who runs it, is mm. too discreet. You know, he, he, he never mm. tells you who's in. Because no. a lot of lot of very, very big actors go in there. Yeah. Yeah. Although I remember once going in and there was a memorial service for the guy who used to do the... Uh, uh, what do you call those? Um, Mr. Kipling's Cakes. Oh, yeah. And uh, he used to do I the voiceovers. I saw Bob Hoskins in there once. Yeah, but he yeah. used to do the voiceover for Mr. Kipling's Cakes. And he used to rehearse. He'd be sitting at the bar and he'd be going, Mr. Kipling's Cakes, mm-hmm. insanely good cakes. Mm-hmm. And I went down and it was surreal. The entire place yeah. was full of Mr. Kipling's Cakes, <laughs> really? which had yeah. been provided for right. his way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bizarre. Yeah. Bizarre. It's yeah. Well, listen, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a great shame we've, we're out of time because yeah. uh, oh. we're, we're off. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, much, much more to do. Thank Excellent. you, John, for coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I'm not one to gossip, but available in all good bookshops. Bite back, bite back. I presume bite back publications. I might yeah. get to sign this copy. Yeah, of course. Yes. I'd be delighted um, to. Which would be wonderful. Yeah. It's great to see you. Lovely to see you yeah. and uh, be back in our old stomping ground. It's only across the road. Yeah, yeah. Well, we might have to have a drink before we disappear. Yeah. We might. It'd be lovely. Yeah. 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 Don't forget to follow the two mics at the two mics on Twitter and on YouTube. Just look for Two Mics TV. I saw an octopus in Spain, in Mallorca. Did you? Yeah. How big well, was it? Well, actually, I didn't, but the kids did, because they were snorkelling. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, and um, my, my, my daughter's boyfriend saw it. Oh, okay. Uh, it was about, it was, it, was a, it was a sort of red in colour, oh. purplish. Yeah. And it was hiding under a rock. Oh, in the water? Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Not yeah. in a shop. 